Hello, and welcome to another game development broadcast for Project CSK. As usual, I am the creator of Project CSK, and the online name that I'm known by is Des. And we're going to continue development almost exactly where I left it off in the last broadcast. I didn't get an opportunity to work on the programming part or the development part of the project uh, between the last broadcast and this one. But I have been, of course, working on other things behind the scenes. And I usually don't bring those up because they're they're kind of things in, in, in progress. In, in, they're in transition, right? It's not really something that's talk worthy at this time. But um, we'll, uh, I will of course uh, go into more details about those things when they're ready to be discussed because right now they're still a bit premature but um, anyway though uh, we're gonna get right into it uh, pretty soon for for those of you that are new coming into the broadcast I'd like to say hello and welcome if you're not familiar with the project there's the website there's the forum there's the um, uh, Discord community, there's Instagram, there's uh, Twitter, there's uh, the usual social media stuff if you're interested in genuinely just learning about the project or just go onto YouTube and watch the previous broadcasts that I've been doing and uploading onto YouTube. Uh, if you're interested in knowing about kind of the roadmap or the direction of um, the project and where it's going and where it's going to be, I would highly recommend watching the 10th anniversary video that I uploaded onto YouTube. That one I think is a pretty important one if you want to just get kind of the overall concept of it. If you're interested in just learning uh, about kind of the cliff notes of the different uh, pieces that I'm working on, you don't want to watch these videos they are a bit too technical, not really your thing, that's totally understandable. I get it. It's not for everybody. You can just read up on the cliff notes on the dev journals that I put up every two weeks or so on the forum. Uh, but if you want to interact with the community, play games, have some laughs, just discuss project csk or other similar types of things in the community you're welcome to join the discord channel where uh, i'm i'm fairly active on the discord channel i try to log in at least once a day but of course due to uh, other um commitments uh, full-time work and other things it's um it's difficult to make time for it um but uh right now our focus is the pets and different pet information, how do we access it, how do we use it, that kind of stuff. And then eventually this will transition into the pet combat system, which is something that I've been looking forward to working on for some time. And that's something that I think we're all looking forward towards. Hi, Hell Candy. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing okay. Thanks for coming by. Um, were you able to figure out a way to turn on the fan while broadcasting? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, when I have the fan on, um, there's this buzzing noise that the microphone picks up. And because it's a small environment, the fan noise echoes uh, in between the walls and the enclosed space. Uh, I intentionally have the windows closed uh, as much as I realistically can because there's too much street noise that gets picked up as well as the sky train and other environmental noises. So when I broadcast on a hot day like this one, it is hot and it is humid. But I mean, uh, it's okay. I, I can I can do it fine for the most part. Uh, not a big deal because I just end up taking a shower afterwards anyway. So uh, it's just a matter of being able to focus and being able to do the things that I want to do. That's really the uh, the key point of it there. So um, we'll we'll get right into it. And of course, as usual, if you have any questions or if you're interested about you know uh, topics related to the project or or whatnot, you're you're welcome to ask me. I don't mind. Or if you just want to say hi, that's perfectly understandable too. Or if you just want to sit back, relax, and watch me uh, do what it is that I do, by all means, uh, go right ahead. Just to be clear, though, I'm not a professional, right? I do this because I enjoy doing this, and I enjoy learning, and I enjoy making stuff, specifically games. And this is a multi player game. I would not have an opportunity like this anywhere else to make something like this, especially not on this scale and not this type of um, um, creative freedom because it's really my own design and whatever things that ideas that I come up with in terms of functionality to implement. Okay, so with that out of the way, 
what we were working on in the last broadcast. We're working on um, the the panels specifically. I know there's uh, there's still an outstanding bug inside of the project that I. I think I accidentally broke some stuff when I was working on it on the weekend. I will look into that. I've been meaning to look into it, but it's it's kind of uh, kind of got pushed aside temporarily. But it's an important one because it's uh, it's a full uh, you know um, what do you call it? It's a serious bug, really, uh, and it's something that I'll definitely get into. But for right now, our focus is the pet information. Let me log in the uh, old client as well, so we can bring it up side by side and uh, have a look at it. So we'll log in with um, one client on this one, and then we'll log in with the other client um, on the other one. So we'll bring up, um, let's go with uh, Cookie Monster. That sounds good. Okay, so we'll have Cookie Monster up on the, um, the old Flash client. And then I'll log in with a different client on this one. Oh, we were in the process of working on this. I forgot. Uh, let's quickly just uh, hide this panel because it doesn't have any functionality yet. We can safely just, uh, just disable the uh, object and we should be able to go into the uh, loading scene and uh, run the game. Are we on the right screen? Yes, we are. Okay, good. Um, so we'll run it and then um, I'll briefly discuss this before we get into it because it also helps me refresh my memory um, before we uh, get right into it. Um, in the previous broadcast, I didn't get a chance to do any coding, but that's okay. Uh, we will get to that stuff. Okay, so um, can move around. What we implemented was that we could select the pet of the other individual and we just have one option in terms of when you select the other person's pet for right now but the main thing that we're working on is when you summon your own pet so let's go with um cheesecake okay uh, and we select our own pet um and it asks us who do you want to interact with i want to interact with cheesecake okay so now um we get the options now these are the options that were previously accessible through here. So uh, what I consider this is each one of these is going to be broken up or is being in the process of broken up into multiple categories uh, to make it more easily uh, displayable and more intuitive and cross-platform compatible on a small screen, on a tablet, or on a desktop. It doesn't matter, right? So we're going to uh, break some of this stuff up. Okay, so the basic information is the one we're kind of working on right now. There's the equipment. That's another thing uh, that will be split. So we got basic information, equipment. We got advanced information, uh, PVP information. We have pet growth, which is another one, uh, another category. And then we have abilities that break up into basic skills and then spells, right? Because they get categorized. Now, the same thing, I've already built out the categories here. So when you select your own pet and we interact with Cheesecake, we have the um, equipment, basic information, which is the panel that we're currently working on right now, advanced information, PVP stats, growth, and then abilities. Abilities, when you click on it, it goes in one more level and it gives you the basic abilities, the skills, and the spells. So these three tabs um, are going to be uh, split. And that's kind of what we're working on right now. And that's where we're gonna continue with um, pretty much right at this point moving forward. Um, of course, uh, this stuff is, it's not finalized, right? It's still in the transition period of uh, not only porting it from the old Flash client to the new Unity cross-platform client, but also kind of moving stuff around because there's going to be quite a bit of stuff that gets moved around as well. Um, as we continue to work towards um, the end goal. But right now, the goal isn't to finish um, this type of fun um, or finalize or put um, finishing polish, should I, should I say, uh, onto it. The goal is to build the functionality, so the logic, the coding, and all that stuff, so then visually can come back to it and revisit it afterward um, when it's ready uh, to kind of put on the finishing touches and uh, that kind of stuff. But for right now, the goal is just functionality. Um, make it work. Uh, 
make it be able to do what it needs to do. And then we'll make it look nice, aesthetic, stylized, all of that stuff afterwards. Okay, so let's go into the, the panel we were just working at. This one is almost ready to uh, show some information. Um, where are we? We need to go into the GUI. Uh, we need to go into GUI. Uh, I did this, this, enable. Okay, yeah. So this is the one that we're currently working on, which is the pet basic info. That's the one when you just um, have your pet available. And the goal of this one is to show the pet name, the title, the level experience, and then the health, the mana, and the stamina. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing. It doesn't quite look that great yet, but it's still in the early stages, right? It'll look a lot better later on once we uh, um, make it really look more stylized. Um, I mean, I could do some minor things here and there, which I don't mind doing, but I don't want to put too much time into the visual appearance. However, I don't mind doing simple little things, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to do something with the, the hearts here just to kind of make them stand out just a little bit more, right? So I want to do that. Um, let's do that actually real quickly. So we'll go into the container over here and we'll go into the content. And this one is block. I broke them up into blocks just because I couldn't come up with a name, but it made sense. So that's block one content or sorry, block zero. And then this one is block one because numbers do start at zero. And it's a good idea to number everything from zero up unless you have a reason to start from one. Um, Okay, so what I want is the hearts. Well, let me select it. Oh, I clicked on this navigation. I wanna make it so I can't select that by accident. So that's in this navigation tree. And just by clicking on this here, it means that you can no longer select it. Wait, how can I still select it? Did I not click on the right thing? I don't think I did. Oh, okay, so that was one piece of it. Uh, what I want to do is also this navigation. So the touchscreen controls, I want that to be non-selectable. And then this one here is the, display text, I wanna make that non-selectable. Okay, yeah. So that doesn't hide it, but it just makes it so I can't accidentally interact with it. So I can select the stuff behind it a lot more easily. And it's something I'd highly recommend. And uh, it's just one of those little things that you get to pick up on. So the first column is of course to show and hide. The other one is to um, make it uh, interactable or non-interactable. Of course, you can still manually select it on the hierarchy here in the left uh, column here, but you just can't select it through the, uh, through the scene view panel. Uh, and I find that very useful because sometimes there's gonna be stuff overlapped and you don't want to always select something that's on top, you just wanna select Select on what you're currently focused on. So I find it's really helpful. And another thing that you can do that's really interesting, I didn't learn about this for some time, but you can double click on stuff and it'll it'll focus in onto it, which I, I like. So any any object that you see, you can double click and it'll it'll center it. And I find that really helpful in terms of um, usability if you want to just focus onto that one object like that. Okay, so what are we going to do here? I'm going to create shadows for these. And uh, I'm going to use the same object, but I'm going to create a shadow. So I'm going to select this, hit Control D. And we're going to call this one uh, Shadow. Uh, I will move it just under uh, this. Okay. Right now, it's in the exact same spot, which is fine. I'm going to move it over a tiny bit. Move it down. Uh, you can see that the layering is off. Uh, this one needs to be behind. So we'll go with layer of five that puts it behind. And then the way that we're going to make this a shadow is we're going to tint it dark, but then we're going to bring the transparency down. Right? So right about there ish, but I want it to be kind of like that, right? So it's not much, right? But that little tiny thing, right? It adds 
quite a bit of style just makes that really stand out more, right? And you can see that's a consistent pattern too with the user interface is everything kind of has a drop shadow with the light source from the top left corner and it casts the shadow to the bottom right of it. So it kind of makes sense to go with that, whether we keep it or not, I don't know. Um, that's something that uh, we can, um, we can figure out at a later time, but what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control D. I'm gonna move that one down to right here for this one and then we'll rename this one to uh the um from the hp we'll rename that to mana and i'll group this just underneath this one okay and there's one more so we'll hit Control d again and then we'll bring this one down as well just so it's offset a little bit not too much i think that's good enough and it's, it's not much, but again, it just adds a little bit of a touch onto it. Right, so that compared to before, now those stand out a little, quite a bit more. I do wanna replace these hearts later with something that, that looks better, but I just think that kind of helps it stand out a little bit more. Okay, so that's one piece of it, but that's just purely aesthetic, right? What I wanna do, is um, I wanna give this stuff functionality, right? So to give it functionality, I'm gonna create a uh, script file specifically for this. And we're going to uh, attach it to this level here. So it'll be the main, um, the main parent for um, this file. Yeah, because we're gonna do a whole bunch of visual and aesthetic things to it uh, later on down the line, of course, just like how we did with the rest of the interface or the plan with the rest of the interface to give it that bouncy and all that kind of transitional stuff. And we'll get into that much later. For right now, um, I wanna just see um, functionality. I wanna display the appropriate content for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this, hit F2, copy the name to clipboard because I'm going to make a script file that's going to match exactly that um, object name. And I find that that's helpful personally just because it um, it's easy to know what's the script attached to it. So just by looking at the object, I know what the script is. Uh, yeah, it's going to be attached here on the right side as well, which you can just double click and go to the script file, but it just helps to keep everything organized and for consistency. So I'm going to paste that name there, okay? And then we'll open it up to here, okay? So we will uh, namespace it, of course. Okay, um, I don't think we're gonna be using update. I have a feeling we're gonna be using start. So we'll leave start there temporarily, but we're gonna need to get access to a bunch of stuff. However, I wanna link this first. So we'll go into our inspector while we have this object selected and we're gonna attach it to this uh, game object. And I, I like this way of usability uh, in that you can just attach stuff um, onto any uh, object in this manner. You can have a multiple scripts, you can have different scripts, or sorry, the same script attached to different objects. I do think that that's a, uh, it's a good way of um, structuring the logic so you can compartmentalize everything, but at the same time have reusable content, which is always a bonus in terms of uh, development and uh, programming of any kind, really. Okay, uh, so what I wanna do is we're gonna need to access which objects. We're going to need to access, instead of block zero, we're gonna to need to be able to access the pet name, the title, the level, the experience, and then the scroll bar or the progress bar, sorry. Um, okay, let's, um, let's, uh, let's make those because those are all going to be uh, text mesh pro. So we'll need to say using uh, TMP pro, okay. 
Um, I'm a big fan of Tech Smash Pro, if you uh, may not have noticed already, but uh, it's definitely better than the uh, the old text uh, component, and it'll it'll replace it eventually. Um, in time it's just a, a matter of time so it's going to be a private tmp underscore text because it's a plain text and this one is going to be uh text um we'll go with a uh, pet name okay control d to duplicate it and then this will be the uh, pet title control d again um level and then um experience okay what we need is we need the uh progress bar okay so we definitely need that and then uh what else do we need we also need the access to uh actually we should call this correctly this is the experience oh i forgot uh, experience also has wait we already added that whoops okay so we have um, that, and then what we need is the health. So we'll go, um, we'll go HP, we'll, uh, mana, and then um, stamina. Okay, and then each one of these will have also a uh, progress bar. So we'll say uh, HP uh, progress bar, um, mana, stamina. Okay, so I, I still need to link those. I don't remember which component it is uh, to expose it as a serialized field. So um, we'll, we'll we'll figure that out very soon. So let's go and have a look at it and see what... Oh, we got to wait for Unity to catch up. I'm not sure if you guys are aware about the the forest fires that are going on right now let me show you this because the weather is really bad right now um where is it fire smoke.ca okay okay so this is what it looks like right now right that's pretty bad right in terms of the the uh the smoke like right now even though it's supposed to be a hot sunny day um the smoke there is so much smoke that it looks like not only is the clouds uh it does it look like it's cloudy but it also looks like it's a really foggy day and even in the morning when i could see the sun the sun was red there was so much uh smoke that you could just easily uh, just look at the sun because it, it it was covered by smoke, so that's that's really unfortunate because uh, there's a lot of health risks associated with this. Even me myself, as someone who's not um, impaired in any way, um, I still find it difficult because um, I, I'm breathing this in 24/7 right now, right, and I can even taste it right because there's so much like in my mouth it tastes like burnt wood that's what it tastes like uh it's um it's really unfortunate but um yeah so that's kind of um that's uh that's what it's like right now yeah it's really unfortunate um because i hear the ambulance uh going uh all over the place um as a result because the uh, though the individuals who have uh health complications and the elderly they are most at risk right because what are you supposed to do you can barricade yourself inside of your place okay yes but it's also really warm outside it's hot and it's humid right so if you have an air conditioner okay you can turn that up but even still there's only so much you can do right because at some point you're going to be exposed to this it's going to come in it's going to leak in from somewhere the ventilation system or somewhere else yeah it'll get reduced significantly but um it's pretty serious it's really serious um okay um anyway so shifting focus back uh, what I want to do is I want to select this object and I want to see what the component is that I need to expose as a serialized object. 
So this is um, image, no, slider, slider. Okay, that's what I want. Um, okay, so that's what we need to do is we need to access it through the slider because we're going to be accessing this value property and we're going to be setting this via script. It doesn't really matter what it's at right now, but we need to, so say serialized field slider for the three different sliders that we're going to be adding. So let's add that. Uh, we'll go with serialized field, private slider. Wait. Um, I think we need to say using Unity Engine.ui. Unity Engine.ui. There we go. Yeah, so that'll give us access to the slider. Okay, so we'll go with uh, slider um, experience, right? I'm just going to copy that to clipboard and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go with slider um, HP. Control D, uh, mana, control D, stamina. Okay. So these are the things that we're going to um, need to um, link uh, via the inspector. So let's, um, let's go ahead and link those up and then we'll do a quick test run and then I'll look into uh, populating it with real information. So with this linked, we should have access to it from here. Okay, these are all the things that we need to uh, populate. So the first one, what we need to do is uh, we'll grab the pet name. So that'll be the pet name. The next one will be the um, pet title. Okay, and we'll just keep going for, um, wait, that was the wrong one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the wrong one. Whoops. Okay, actually, let's lock this so I don't lose focus of this inspector. Okay, and that way it, it'll make it a bit easier. So that's the correct one. Then that means for name, was this one correct? I hope so. We'll check just to make sure. Okay, so that's correct. That's correct. Okay, and then level should be this one. Yeah, because I'm just looking at what's being selected here. If it selects the crosshair over here, then it's the wrong one. I could probably even do this. I don't know if that's easier to see. The crosshair works for me because I just look at it as what's the center point um, of it. And uh, I just go from there. Oh, hi, you, Zach. Uh, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing all right. How about the pet type? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by how about the pet type, but I uh, hope you guys are doing okay. Um, but uh, I'm just going to continue with this over here. All right, so the next one is the pet title we have. Okay, and then so the next one is the level. Okay. Okay, so we have pet level and then experience. Okay, not that one, but this one. So this one will be the experience and then the slider. I need to select the object that has the slider. I think it's this, we'll find out. So I'll just drag and drop it and see, nope, it's not that. What about this? Nope, not that. How about just grabbing slider? That makes sense. There we go. That's the slider. I like that because it, it filters uh, so that um, you don't actually accidentally drag and drop the wrong object. Okay, so that is the first uh, block. So that's block zero. You can just collapse that. We'll move on to block one. Block one, I believe, has less objects. Yeah, so only six more to go. Um, okay. Uh, so what we want is the canvas HP. Yeah, okay. So we want the health text. 
we want the mana text and then the stamina text. And then there's the sliders, of course. So where's our sliders over here? Okay, this is our HP slider. And then our mana slider. And then one more to go. Okay. And there's our stamina slider. So now we got everything um, properly linked up in the uh, inspector. So we have the references to the objects. Um, what I want to do is I want to do a quick test. Oh, and I also want to expose, uh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Uh, so we'll say serialized field and we'll go the private um, private uh, float and we'll say slider uh, minimum uh, value, right? This is the, the lowest value because the slider, you can bring it down to zero, but I want it to be circular. I want there to be a minimum value to the slider. Like if you had this one selected, I can unlock this now. I want this to have a minimum value because if it goes down to zero, it looks like that. But if it goes down to, let me zoom in here and show you what I mean. So from here, if it goes to one, no, let's see if I can get it there. See, that doesn't look right, right? So I don't want that. I want there to be a minimum. The minimum should be circular and it should be about there, right? So anywhere between four and we'll say 0 0.04 and 0 0.06. 0 0.06 is a bit too much. Let's go 0 0.04. Yeah, I think that's our minimum value. That way it's circular and there's something still there, right? So that, that's what I want to do. Um, so the minimum value will make it a uh, 0 0.04F, right? But then we'll be able to access it via the, um, the inspector over here once um, Unity catches up. Um, you didn't see any pet type. Did you not add it yet? It was uh, defined with pet when you're using, for example, green jelly, yellow jelly, bunny. Oh, I think you're right on that. I completely forgot about that, actually. No, you're right. Because pet type. Oh, that's why I missed it. It's because pet type is over here. Okay. Uh, pet type, no, you're right. Um, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, we do need to add pet type. Uh, I already aligned everything. Okay, whatever. Uh, not a big deal. Um, we can add pet type. Uh, it, it's important enough. I think it's uh, actually pretty important now that I think about it. Let's add pet type um, to here and uh, we'll make room for it. So what I'll do is, because everything is, um, it, it'll just require a little bit of moving around. But what I'm thinking is pet type can go right under pet name or above. No, I think below, because I want the pet name to be the first thing you see. I could even move pet type to the right. Could we, we have this empty space over here, right? So instead of adding another line, so stretching this out um, vertically a little bit more, we could move it to the right. You know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna overthink it right now. I'm just gonna add it. So we have the functionality there. And then we'll figure out where it's going to go and all that um, visual uh, alignment and aesthetics at a later time. Um, yeah, we could use the empty space. Um, yeah, there's a lot of options. That, that's what's great about this is once you, you know, kind of get used to working within the Unity environment, uh, as long as you make stuff that kind of conforms to their standard, uh, you can move stuff around fairly easily. Uh, but of course, there's some challenges here and there. However, for right now, what I want to do is I just want to 
squeeze it in. So we will select this, hit Control D to duplicate it. It's strange. You can't hit F2 after Control D. Um, I find that very strange because you should be able to. Okay, so that's gonna be our pet type. I'll, I'll reposition it vertically soon. It's a bit too much. I want more space here. I want more vertical space specifically uh, for the, um, the hierarchy. Okay, so we have pet type and then to the right of it is going to be the, wait, what did I call it? Oh, I just left it as the one. Okay, I see. Uh, that's probably not the best choice, but I'll go with it for now. So this will be pet type with a one at the end of it. So this one will be the editable text or dynamic text that will change for the pet type. Now we need to find a resting place in the hierarchy. What I'm thinking is I will uh, put it directly um, kind of order them. So pet type will go under um, right there. Okay, so in the hierarchy, it'll go there, but now we need to move it into position. Um, so position wise, um, we should be able to just grab these two and yeah, okay, so there's our pet type. So we just need to make room for it. And uh, I think we have enough space in here that we can just nudge everything down a little bit just to kind of make room for it for now. And again, we'll, we'll clean up all of this stuff at a much later time. So um, I'm not too worried about it. I just want to make room for it right now. Okay, so the alignment is pretty bad, I admit, but um, we'll, we'll clean this up later. Um, this will be the pet name, it will be the type. Okay. Okay, how's that? We're good, right? Right, guys? We're good? Yeah, it's okay-ish. Kinda. I know, it, it's... It's, it doesn't look great visually, but oh, we also need to add it over here. Okay, so um, what we need to do is uh, we'll say pet type, right? Um, and then I will need to um, reference that as well. It's fine, okay. Um, so I need this reference as well. I believe it's this one. Yeah, it is that one. Okay. So we'll grab that, drag and drop that into there. Okay, now we're ready to um, be able to do some um, modifications and whatnot. Um, so I, I, as you already know, I, I don't like to expose stuff um, directly. I like to encapsulate things and there's valid reasons for it. It's actually... Uh, an important standard to follow in terms of programming. Yes, it requires another layer of logic, but that layer of logic has saved me so many times um, that uh, I, I've just adopted this standard. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is I will say public uh, string and it will be uh, text pet name, right? And then we'll use the uh, encapsulation so when we go to get it we'll say return and it'll return a uh, text uh, pet name dot text so it'll grab the text out of that text field component and then when we go to set it we're going to do the pretty much the opposite so text pet name dot text equals value value is of course a unity reserved keyword so it means when you call this and you say text uh, pet dot or text pet name space equals space any value, this will be the value that gets passed in, right? So um, I wanna do that for every single one of them. So I'm just gonna grab this, actually, wait a minute. 
can I, I wonder, if I hit control R E, yeah, that's what I thought. It encapsulates the, actually that could still work because that, that would just need a quick edit. Let's try that. Okay, so if I go that, that means I need to change this to string. I need to change this to text and this to text. Which one's faster? Um, I, I personally like this method. I, I've used this type of get and set method. This is the, uh, what is it? The lambda, llama, I don't know. I don't think it's llama, I think it's lambda. I, I keep forgetting. I, I don't know why I think llama. Uh, to me, llama, I thought it was really funny back in the day. So there's, and I still use it, Winamp. I don't know if you guys use it, but at any computer that I use, I install um, Winamp on it right away. It's like one of the first applications I install for listening to music and playing music and MP3 files. And by default, they have this one um, uh, file that that plays and when you hit play right after install it says winamp kicks a lot of uh zazz and then or something like that and then there's a llama uh that uh that goes in there with the sound what is that thing i keep forgetting let's see if i can find it winamp llama intro Is this it? I don't know. Wait, I just opened. Whoops, sorry about the volume. It's kind of loud. But did you guys hear that? Let me know. That's the that's the intro if you heard it. So that's what it does. Um, OK, um, anyway. Um, so back to here, actually. Uh, so the idea is I want to encapsulate all of these, but I just want to do it more efficiently if possible. Couldn't hear. Oh. Couldn't hear. I think that might have to do with my audio settings. Because I use, um, so I've been using this application for a while for my audio, right? And uh, this allows you to mix things on your system. Like right now, I have my music playing. My music doesn't go through the stream, but it allows me to have multiple inputs, multiple outputs, and then mix everything together. Um, so it's really helpful, but um, I think... I don't have the feed from that browser going in through the mix for you guys to be able to hear it out on the broadcast. But that's not a, it's not so simple to do just because I'm not that familiar with it. So I think we'll just skip it. But if you guys are interested, you're welcome to uh, YouTube it. Um, it was called uh, Winamp Llama Audio Intro. If you want to have a quick listen to it, it's kind of funny, but that was their, that was their intro. I don't know why they chose a llama uh, of all things, but it, it was really funny uh, back in the day. Uh, and Winamp is a great application. I still use it to this day. Like, I don't know how many years have I been using it pretty much from the beginning. Yeah. From the beginning, when there was the internet, when it first came out, that's when I started using Winamp. That's how long I've been using it. Okay, um, so let's let's do the rest of these because I want to implement this functionality onto it and see kind of what it looks like. So what I will do is I will just uh, do the encapsulation first and then I'll go in and I will edit these. The sliders are going to be treated a little bit different. Yeah, the sliders, I'll wait a, a little bit uh, and we'll get into those last kind of thing. So from there, I want to replace these two text. I'll just copy paste. Okay. OK. 
Okay. So I'll grab that. Should be able to go. Yeah, fine. I'll just do it one by one. I was going to do the um, multi-line edit, but this is uh, nearly as fast. Not exactly, but pretty close to it. It is so hot in here. Okay, so that's our, our text fields. Okay, and the reason why I do that is so I don't directly expose these. I, ex I expose them through encapsulation. And that also allows us to test here like this and say uh, text uh, pet name equals and we'll say our pet name, right? So that way it, it'll show up as our pet name when we run it. So let's go ahead and um, just run it to make sure that um, everything is kind of referencing each other correctly. So that should, the pet name should change to um, our pet name. And there we go, it changed, okay. And it did crash, so there was a um, error of some sort. Oh, right, I keep forgetting about that. Okay, so this is something that you'll see me make this mistake often, right? If you are using any component, any UI stuff, it uses an event system, right? The event system, when you have multiple scenes, like you see me have multiple scenes. Where's my scenes? Right? So each one of these scenes, right, can be run standalone or you have one going into the other. Like the loading scene is the one that's always available and it stays and remaining active all the time. It is the scene that will load any other scene, right? But they also need to run standalone, right? So for them to run standalone, everyone needs its own event system being this object here, right? But you can't have more than one event system active without getting this error message that it's basically telling you you have more than one event system active. So the way around that that I figured worked for me is to let every scene have an event system, but have it disabled by default, right? And the way that that works is I made this uh, object, it's a very simple object, and I call it event system inhibitor. What it does is when you load a scene, at, right at the beginning, when you start a scene, right, it checks, does it have an event system? If it does, it will not enable its target event system, which is this one here that's disabled. If no event system exists, this will enable this and we'll have one instance of the event system, right? So that way, even if we have multiple event systems from loading one scene to the next scene to the next scene, instead of having three active event systems, only the first one will be activated and then any of them afterwards will stay uh, in the deactivated mode, right? So, and that works very well. Uh, however, when you are dealing with Unity UI stuff, anytime that you add something that's UI, so you right click and you say UI, any of these that you select will add an event system as well, right? What it does is it checks to see if there's an active event system. So it does the opposite of what my logic does, kind of in a, in a manner, they counter each other. So as a result of that, right now, I have two active event systems. What I need to do is just remember to select this one that was created and just delete it. That's all I need to do. And that will make this error message go away. And what I'll do is I'll test it just to make sure we'll run it again. The pet name should change, but no error message, right? So that's something that I keep forgetting because I don't do it that often, uh, but it's something that's, um, that I need to keep in mind. However, what is important is that this works, right? So we were able to change that um, that means the other ones also work. So what we need to do now is the EXP or the, the progress bars. Uh, we already have them referenced. So the way that the progress bars are going to work is I want to just expose them as a percentage. Or how do we want to do that? Let's 
I don't think I want to expose them as a percentage. I think the idea is actually... No, I want to calculate it. That's what I want to do. I want to calculate it. I don't actually want to expose them. Oh, so that means that this was also redundant. I didn't need to do this. But since it's done, I'm going to leave it. What we actually want to do then is we want to have um, a function. So public void, and we'll say uh, set um, experience. Okay, so there will be two values. Um, one of them, and both of them will be integers. Um, int, um, we'll say um, value current, and then int uh, value max, right? And then we'll use the value current and the max value to set the, set the value of the pet experience. Um, that will equal, um, so it will be, oops, value current plus, and it will have a slash in between, and then it'll be a uh, value max, right? But what we also want is we want the percentage value. So we want the uh, percent. Percent will equal, and we'll need to convert these from, um, sorry, from integer to float, otherwise they won't calculate properly in my experience. Um, so we need to say that treat this as a float. So we'll say value current um, divided by float, just so it becomes a decimal value, value, um, value max, right? So then this will give us a percentage of anywhere between zero uh, and one, one being 100%. Um, and then what we want to also check is um, if and else, if percent is less than um, slider minimum value, so that means if it's less than that, we want to use the, the minimum value. If it's above that, we'll use the percent value provided, of course. Okay, and it doesn't matter what value you pass in, uh, as long as uh, the current value is not higher than the max value, and that shouldn't happen anyway, right? Um, not unless it's intentional. Um, so the way that that will work is our slider, which is our experience, we will set um, that dot uh, value equals slider value, minimum value, if it's below that threshold. And if it's above that threshold, we're going to use our calculated percent value. So let's see, if we were to call this, what would happen? So let's say for simplicity, we'll say our health is 50 or 30 out of 100, right? So that should be very easy to calculate that. So let's have a look at that and see uh, what happens if our health is 30 out of 100. So the slider, uh, the progress bar should be at the 30% point when we go and we run this. And there we go, right? So that's exactly correct. That's at the 30% point, right? But what about if we make it less than that? What if we say it's at... Um, zero okay so if it's at zero then it should check to see if it's less than the slider minimum value which it will be then it should use the slider minimum value which is the point uh zero four f value so let's just check that just to make sure And yeah, that, that looks about right. So it, it was there before and it's going to stay there. So that's fine. Um, I consider that as functional. 
Okay, so we need to do the same for the for the other stuff. So these test things, I'm just gonna leave those there. But now that we have um, experience, I'm just gonna copy that. Okay, so we'll have another one for, so this one will be set health. I guess it's probably easier if you just call it HP. Um, and then that one will be mana, and then this one will be stamina. Okay. And then our sliders. So we have slider HP on HP. And then this one will be the uh, mana. And then our last one is going to be the stamina. Okay. So now that we have those, so that means when you call one. Oh yeah, of course, we need to set these as well. Um, so this will need to set... Um, HP. This one will need to be mana. Um, mana. Okay. And stamina. Right. So we're going to access it through these functions. And by calling these functions, it will both update the text and it will update the, uh, the progress bars. So let's have a look at that again and um, see it kind of working. So this one will leave our experience. Actually, let's, let's put it somewhere like um, just a whatever number because I want to experiment with different um, numbers, right? It doesn't matter really what the number is. I just want to see uh, what what turns out. So this one will be um, HP, okay? And that one will be mana and that one will be stamina. I know these are big numbers, but that's okay. Okay. So this will be um, our final test here. And then I'm gonna look into getting the real information. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? Oh, I accidentally made this one bigger, but it didn't go over the one. Um, okay, so that, that was a mistake, but that's okay. I meant to make it slightly smaller, but that's okay though. So uh, it looks like all of these work, right? And they're working correctly. I just added one too many zeros on that one. Okay, so with that, what I wanna do is I wanna check, um, so we'll say if, right? Uh, and we'll say uh, single, single framework instance dot uh, IO manager dot is connected to server equals false. So if it's uh, not connected to server, that means we're running locally. So we can just move this stuff up here and that will be our test information. However, if we are connected to server, we want to get the real information for the pet. So how do we access that? We should only be able to access this when we have a pet active. So that means we should be able to get the um, my active pet. I thought there was a 
my active pet object that um, we exposed. Okay, I was really hoping we had that. Uh, that's fine. We can we can easily add it. So similar to this one here, what we'll do is we'll say um, public uh, object uh, my pet. And this will be um, my active um, pet. So this will be the actual pet itself. Um, we'll check, of course, if um, we'll check if a pet is. Um, wait, what did I do there? How did I mess that up? I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have a pet active. So if dictionary, my, wait, something's wrong. It's not a used value, but something, I did something wrong here. This should have worked. Okay, maybe I broke something else in the process. Does this crash? Okay, no. So it was right from adding this. Oh, right. I need to say get. That's why. That's what I did wrong. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what I want to do is I want to check if um, I want to check the uh, dictionary my pets dot uh, contains key false, meaning we're going to check if key exists. And if the key is um, my active pet DB ID, Right? So whatever value this is of the active pet DB ID, if the key does not exist and it will not exist if it's minus one, the condition that it'll be minus one is going to be the condition where the pet is not active, meaning there's no summoned pet active, then it'll be minus one. So if that's the case, then we're going to return null, right? But then if it does exist, then we will return the actual value. So dictionary my pet, and then we're gonna return uh, underscore my active pet DBID. Okay, so that'll return the correct reference to the object. So that's how we're gonna know it, our pet is there. And what I wanna do is I wanna just grab a reference to it. So object my pet, and we're going to say object my pet, just cause we're gonna access a bunch of different values from it. I don't wanna keep calling to keep retrieving the same object again and again. Um, so we'll just grab it once and then we'll use it. So single framework uh, instance dot my pet, and then we're gonna call my active pet if. Uh, so this is if we don't uh, open it accidentally. So if object my pet equals null, that means there's no active pet. Uh, we will say um, debug dot log, and we'll uh, go with generic functions dot text color because I just want to color it red because this is uh, it shouldn't happen. So we'll say generic function hex color um, red, right? And we'll say um, could not uh, retrieve uh, active pet object, right? But if we do get it and it's valid then that means this object is valid. So what we can do from there, we should be able to get pet name. Yeah, okay. Pet name will be our uh, text pet name, right? So that's our pet name. Um, the other one is text pet type. Um, I think I still have my clipboard. Yeah, so pet type. Okay. 
Okay, I don't think I exposed that one. Um, the next one is going to be text um, pet title. I don't think I did that one either. Okay, the next one is going to be text pet level. Okay, so we do have that one. And then um, experience. Okay, so we need to set um, experience. And we will um, do it the same way. So we'll say uh, experience I don't think I exposed that. Let's have a look at that object actually. What does it have? Okay, yeah, so it's missing some stuff. It's not, because um, you can see by it being grayed out, it's, um, it means it's, it's not being used. If it's, uh, if it's clear white, um, that means that it has been used. If it's grayed out, it means that it's not being used yet. And uh, so we can see um, that a lot of this stuff just doesn't exist yet. And that's fine. Um, where's pet level? Okay, but why does that give me a warning here? Oh, uh, integer to string, right. That's why. Okay, so that should work. And then um, what about the other stuff? Do we not? Okay, so HP, we have HP, so we should be able to do the, the health and whatnot. Let's do those. Um, so we'll uh, set, um, whoops, caps lock. Uh, we will set the, um, set HP. And we'll say HP current and then HP uh, max. So that one should work. Um, set mana. Um, and this should be uh, mana. Did I not expose mana? Oh, I called it MP. Okay. Um, I don't know why I did that. I really should be keeping these things consistent. Okay, I'll need to look at that at a later time to uh, address the inconsistencies. But for right now, we'll just keep going. So set stamina will be our next one. So stamina current and then um, stamina maximum. Okay, so the other stuff we don't have yet, but I want to see this thing working. However, to get to this point, we still don't have a system yet to bring this panel up, right? Because right now we can select it, but we don't have a system yet to bring the panel up. And that's the other part of it. So that stuff that we've just implemented we can't test it yet until we're able to bring this panel up via the uh, the navigation. So to do that, that will require the parent of this being this object will need its own class. So I'll copy that name. We'll go down into the scripts folder. Right click, create a C sharp script. I'll just paste that in. Okay, so this one, uh, same idea, we'll namespace it. 
because this one is the one that'll kind of manage all the uh, various different panels. And the way it's going to do that is, uh, what I was thinking is that it's going to listen for events being fired through the event system. So it'll wait for events. And that's how this one is going to work is that it's going to be event driven. So that means this will need a, um, we'll need to say uh, single framework dot instance dot check initialized okay and then it'll need a public void destroy on destroy it will yeah so it'll need a uh, private void add event listeners And then we'll need the uh, remove event listeners and the remove one, it will go into the destroy just to kind of clean things up. The add will of course go into the start because that only gets called once. On the remove as well, I'll need to put this in just to make sure it doesn't crash on exit. So single framework dot instance equals null. If it does return that just um, on exit, if it's already being destroyed, we can't we can't call that object. So then the event system, same idea. So it, it just depends on order of destruction is really what it comes down to. This just makes sure that um, if it gets the opportunity, it will unregister the events. If it doesn't, those objects are going to be destroyed and they're going to get cleaned up by the garbage collector anyway. But it helps to remove... That way it makes this object just cleaner to use. And uh, that's what we want is the more clean something is, the better in the long run. Because you never know what you're going to add or modify later on. So the better idea is to just make sure that it's clean, really, on both the add and on the uh, destroy. Because otherwise, uh, you, sometimes you get into those scenarios, and I've been there myself countless times, where it's like, okay, this isn't behaving the way I want it to. Why is it not behaving the way that I want it to? Oh, right. It's because I did this. I didn't anticipate this. I should have cleaned this up afterwards. I didn't, all of that stuff. So you always want to destroy. You always want to have a destroy. And the destroy should clean up whatever this object is in control of. Um, that's important. Okay, so we need to link this up though. Um, but before we do that, we need to, let's move this one over to this side. Okay, so that will need a reference to this object. Or can we just use it as a game object? No, I think it'll need the full reference. So it'll be a private, oops. Uh, serialized field, uh, private, um, the reference to the object. And then of course, I like to have underscore because it's a private member of this, um, of this class. Okay, now we can link this um, in the inspector. We'll of course need to give Unity a, a bit of time for it to catch up and then we'll, um, we'll link it right afterwards. Okay, so we just go add component. Okay, and there's our spot where we can just drag and drop this one right into there. Okay, so how is it going to work though? We still need an event to listen to that will enable this object. Um, that's the next one. So that's our next step is to, is to do that. Um, the event though, I think, how can we link it? I think I made a, um, let's, I just want to disable this. Actually, we don't have to disable it. What I'll do is on start, I'll make sure it's disabled. Um, so we'll say set whoops no that dot game object dot set active 
So that way, if I forget to disable it, it won't be floating there uh, all the time. Um, this way, it just kind of hides it. Um, okay. So what we need to do is, I think I did make a... Um, I thought I made a manager for that. Or maybe I considered it. Okay, uh, let's see. Where is that manager for that one? I don't think I made it. I think I considered it. We'll go into the manager's um, folder and see what classes do we have. Do we have a pet one? We have my pets, yes. I thought there was a UI one. Yeah, I thought I made something similar to this one. Okay then. I don't see it. So I think I considered it. So the idea with this one is that we would have a manager to act as the intermediary in between when you need to display any uh, systems uh, or, or UI kind of stuff. That way the manager is the middleman and the manager can um, uh, intercept it and it can suppress it if it should, depending on the current state. So kind of like a state machine in a way, but not exactly, just to be able to suppress uh, the, uh, the request. And then the way that it would work is you would directly reference the manager and say, manager, show me this. And here's the information, right? So the manager doesn't do anything. It'll just dispatch that event. And anyone who is the appropriate listener can then listen in on that one centralized location and display that. So that means we would need to create this uh, coordinator and then um, we can listen into it. So I think that's our next step here is we need to create this class. Really, I thought I made it. I really did think I made it. I think I, I considered it so much that in my mind, I made it when in actuality, I didn't make it, right? Does that make sense? Okay, um, one last check. So chat, community requests, creatures, dialogue, uh, emotes, uh, focus controller, friends, selection menu, guild, tooltip, uh, input coordinator, interactive objects, inventory, pets, shop, object pool, Pet battles, quest, resource, user, virtual camera, world teams. Okay, so it doesn't exist then. Okay, so what we'll do is right click and we will create the script and this will be manager, manager UI coordinator. Cause I want it to be generic. We're gonna use it in the same way for a lot of stuff. It's just in this case, it's gonna be used for the pet information. It'll also be used for different things. Let's say your character or um, other things, right? In the future. Wait, how do we do the, the NPCs then?
Because when you select an NPC that has to go through somewhere to dispatch the event, okay, let's have a look at that first before I commit to making yet another manager. So we'll go to the uh, screen NPC shop and I'll open this one up. Interesting. So this is going directly through the event manager. Oh. Okay, so that means this is another one. So the NPCs will also need to go through the, the UI manager. Okay, I, I really thought that this was um, accessing the information a bit different, but um, I don't know. Um, it's possible that I misremember it, and that's okay. It, it's not a big deal. We, we can definitely fix this. Let's, um, let's just close this one up for now. Okay, so that means that creating that new manager is valid. It will serve a purpose uh, both in the short term and in the long term. And in the long term, it may serve even uh, a more important uh, purpose. So we'll right click, create a C Sharp script, and this will be a uh, manager. Uh, what I'm thinking is something like UI coordinator, right? That way it's very generic. And it's very generic in that in the way that it can be used, but also it's specific in that it's descriptive enough that you know, oh, this is for coordinating the UI, right? Yeah, let's go with that for now. Okay, so this, we will need to add it to the framework. So uh, name, namespace, okay. And of course we'll need to remove the mono uh, behavior stuff because this does not need that in any way, shape or form. However, this will use the interface and it will dispatch events. So it'll need I, uh, I event dispatcher, right? So that's my custom class, whoops. It will not have start, it will not have update, it will have um, construct, which is a manual constructor. It will have uh, public void destroy. Um, private void add event, wait. So it will, um, potentially listen and we'll need the remove. Uh, we'll put the remove of course in the destroy and then we will add the, um, the add into the, um, the construct. Right, uh, we'll need to copy this over just to be on the safe side. Um, so we'll copy this one over here. Right, so that's our bare bones manager. However, now we need to add this to the framework so we can access it through the singleton framework. We'll go over here and we'll say uh, private uh, manager. Okay. So this other stuff, I don't think I need this. This is because I, I brought it in from my other project initially. So you'll see commented out code all over the place. 
Um, okay, so we can add this one here at the very bottom. Order doesn't matter because this is just how you access it. Um, and this will be if underscore um, manager uh, UI coordinator, if it equals null, it will just copy that here because I don't want to type it out. Okay, so that's that, how we access it. And then on the destroy, um, I don't think order of destruction will matter for this one either. So we'll just put it in at the bottom. If it does not equal null, we want to call destroy and then set the reference to null to help out the uh, garbage collector. And then there's the creation. So the creation, I don't think will matter either because this is a very specific one. I, I think uh, we can just put it anywhere. And if we need to, we can uh, change the order of creation um, afterwards and bump it up or down. So this will equal new, and this is the only location where it does, and then we'll manually call construct. Okay, so that adds it um, to our framework. Now we have that manager that we can use. Why is this open? I want to close a few um, tabs. The manager, we can pin it over. Let's let's move it over onto this side. It's because we're running out of space to pin stuff. Okay, so this one will pin up here. And then uh, pet basic information, we'll, we'll get to this shortly. Multiple display utility. Oh, that's a Unity thing. We don't need that. Okay. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to, one, be able to dispatch an event. So this will need to expose a function. We can add it right here. And we'll say uh, public void request um, pet panel and we'll we'll change the wording and stuff later okay so this is how it gets accessed and then this will need to dispatch the event so it'll be a private void a dispatch event Dispatch event, it will be um, panel um, pet basic info. So when we call this function, this will call this private member and it will dispatch the event. Now we need to create an event. You see the cascading effect, right? That's why it takes time to figure these things out, right? But we're getting closer to be able to access it through the circular navigation. Now we need an event specifically for this manager. And this one will need to be a generic one because it's gonna get used in a lot of different ways. I can't foresee all of the ways that it'll get used right now, but I have a feeling it'll be an important one over time because we haven't even gotten into the pet combat system or any of the other stuff yet either. And it, it will, in some degree, uh, tie into each other. So we'll right click, uh, we'll create C Sharp script, event object, and then this one is manager uh, UI coordinator. Okay, um, this will extend, actually we'll need to namespace it first. So we'll say uh, namespace. Okay, 
Okay, this will need to extend from event object, event object, there we go. Yeah, that, that's all it needs to do. Uh, it doesn't need any of this stuff, right? Because event object is, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, event, sorry, wrong screen. Um, I forgot. Um, so event object is my um, custom event and it uses multiple interfaces and this is what allows it to go through my, um, my custom made event system, right? And by extending from this, it inherits all of these um, abilities, right? Uh, but it doesn't need anything right now. It, it can just be blank. But what, all we need is the name, so I can close that. So this over here will be event object equals new um, event okay, and then whoops event object dot uh, dispatcher equals this. And yeah, uh, we can uh, push it through the event system, but we will need an event ID now for that. And you see the level of depth that this kind of logic goes into, right? And this stuff that I'm doing right now, this isn't even the more complex things. There are things that are far more complex uh, and, um, even the most complex things though, uh, it's a matter of just breaking it down logically. And I've caught myself so many times trying to do something in one go that is too big, too complex. And I had challenges with it. Right. And what I had to do was of course break it down but sometimes i think to myself oh i can do this i can do this i can do this and i get to the point it's like nope i can't do this i can't do this i need to break it down uh and make it more realistic to manage uh because it's it's really easy uh to get stuck into that uh mind state uh especially when you're kind of like in the zone and you're just flying through code and then all of a sudden you hit this you know this hard part and it's like oh wait i need to kind of slow down a little bit and uh you know put things together a bit more logically and put a little bit more thought into it and break up the more complex tasks into smaller ones so that they're more easily uh manageable so this will be manager ui coordinator um, and this will be um, show okay I don't want to type that whole thing out we need to abbreviate this so we'll say my pet basic info and it's still quite long uh, so this one will be one one eight zero 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 Okay, so that's going to be the event ID for this one. So it's going to go through the um, event manager. So it'll be single framework uh, instance uh, event manager dot dispatch event. And the only reason why I can dispatch event is because we added this here, right? This interface. That's why I can go through the because uh, by adding this if this interface, this is another one that's my custom one that I will um, add some more information to it later, but this just allows this to be accessible as an interface, which is um, really important. Um, doesn't have any logic really, the logic is in the manager portion, but uh, in the future it's capable of adding uh, more logic into it. But what we need is event manager dot the ID dispatcher is going to be this and then our event object and that's it so now we can um, dispatch this event wow it's hot um, I mean like both temperature hot and humidity is up there I kind of missed my fan but that's okay uh, we got this right yeah oh we're doing good for time cool all right uh, so that will call this this dispatches the event 
So now we need to one, call this because this has zero references. And two, we need to listen into this and that will connect everything together. The calling should be easy though. Because what we need to do is from here, selectable interactions, when we say, um, where's the other one that listens for this? There we go. So right here, and again, I, I do need to uh, refactor some of this logic, but at this point, we can also add in action. Uh, mm, pet. Whoops, not abilities, basic. I didn't mean to do that. What we want is basic information. Okay, yeah. So when we say a uh, show pet, oh, I keep doing that. I take the break out of the logical position. Okay, what we need to do then is we need to call this. So that connects one point of it, meaning from when we select from the circular menu, uh, this is the logical path that it will go. It So we'll need to say single, single framework instance dot um, UI uh, coordinator dot request and that's all that we need to do. So that's this point of it. So this will follow this, go over here, call that. This calls this function, this dispatches the event. Now we can listen into it on, did I close it? No, it's over here. Let's move this over here. So when we go to add an event listener, what we're going to do is we're going to say single framework dot instance dot event manager dot add event listener. Uh, and we'll say event manager and then our event ID and then who's going to dispatch it. It'll be the UI manager, of course. So it'll be instance dot um, UI, sorry, coordinator. And then the function will be handle um, show uh, my pet basic info, right? And then let's um, add it to the remove as well so we don't forget about it. almost there but this sets the groundwork for all the other functionality that will follow the similar path as well right so that's it's really important um, so from here then we can just say this uh, dot uh, game object dot set active is true and we can add transitions and add uh, intro uh, transitions at a later time. And I spelt later wrong. Okay, so that means this now links it on both the request and on the receiving end when we listen into the event and we activate this panel, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see how it actually works though because um, we just did all that stuff. Chances are I may have made a few logical mistakes or broken some things in the process. It happens, right? It's completely understandable. However, to do this, we have to log in because we can't access it um, in standalone mode. We, we currently have to log in to access our pet information anyway, right? Uh, so we need to change the scene to the loading scene Okay. And let's run it and see what happens. Okay, let's move down here a bit. Okay, so we will go summon our pet and we'll summon um, Fuzzball. Okay. So we have Fuzzball summoned select this and then if we select basic info yeah can't close it yet but so uh i can see that this information did not populate 
Actually, it did populate now that I think about Wait. What happened there? Why is it zeros? That means the information is not there. Really? Um, let's see, did anything crash? Okay, so I don't see any crashes. Yeah, I don't see any crashes. Okay, that's interesting. So why did it come out as zeros though? Because this, this is very specific. Um, that means the values were... We're not set. Let's have a look at that. When we summon a pet, we should get a packet, a synchronization packet that, um, that gives us all of the appropriate information for that pet. Wait, 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 wait. I, I just remembered. We, we didn't do this stuff. So what, what we should be missing is pet type, title should be default. Experience is default, okay? So these are correct because I haven't implemented them yet. So pet type, pet title, and experience the, the text. Um, the text and the experience bar is default. However, these, they should have been set because we set them right here when we got these values. That means these values were potentially not populated. So let's go to that. Hit F12 and we'll go straight to it. Let's see, does this get set? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's why. So it's not actually... I think we're missing a packet of information here. I think we're receiving it and potentially not setting it. Because I don't see one here for... Wait, I do. No, this isn't the one that has the current health and stuff. So this one, this big one, it has um, 30, uh, 34 um, pieces of information, but none of this is the current health and whatnot. This is like your, your stats, like your multipliers and uh, what values you've assigned where kind of thing. Uh, but where's the other stuff though? There should be one that sets the the current uh, health and, and whatnot. Maybe we access it differently. Okay. What is this? Handle user, my pet, HP, mana power, stamina. Okay. Because this looks like the one that would set those values. But that's the current values, though. What about the max? Okay, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Okay, so we haven't done the pet uh, skills yet. This, this one's going to be a complex one, which we'll need to do later. Um, what else? We, the self-information. This one we did do. This was that big one there that had 34. Okay, so I can remove this. This is redundant at this point. What else? I think we're missing a packet, meaning it's being received, but we're not actually handling the information 
or not processing it. Okay, so here's one that we can do, the experience stuff. So if you have pet level, next level experience is max level. So this we can get. Okay, let's let's go one step at a time. So the one that I want then is I want the um, experience. I think that's an important one. Uh, so since we're already in this area, let's look at the experience one. Um, is max level? Let's check. Uh, do we expose is max level? No. Okay. So we'll hit Control R E. I don't want that. I want that. Yes. Okay, hit F12 to jump to it. Wait, we're supposed to, thought it was supposed to go to it. Okay, so we don't wanna set it there, we only wanna get it. Okay, so that gives us is max level. Um, we want the current level experience minimum and next level experience. Let's see, do we have those exposed? No, we don't. Okay, so same idea, control R, Control R E. Remove that one because this this what this one does, and the reason why I remove this one is because it goes and it replaces all references. Like you can see here, it'll replace this reference to being this function that it's going to make. Instead, I don't want it to do that. I want it to remain directly accessing that variable instead of going through this function. All I want it to do is to create this. That's all I want it to do. I don't want it to do uh, replace anything else anywhere, okay? And then I want to disable the set. I just want the get, okay? And then this one as well. No references, so control, uh, control R E, okay? Wait. Did I do that right? Okay. So now I should be able to access it on, on this side. So we should be able to access set experience, but set experience is going to be a bit different in that we need to actually calculate because experience has three values. One is, or that's not correct. Experience has multiple pieces. There's your total experience, right? From very zero to the end, which is the maximum experience that you, until you hit the cap, which is fine, but that's not what we want to show. We want to show the experience for the current level, right? So let's say your experience total is, uh, for simplicity, we'll say is 100, right? The start would be zero, the end is 100. And we'll say that the max level is three levels. So each level has 33 points of experience, right? What we want to show is the experience in between the current um, level, meaning the percentage of whichever block you fall into. We don't wanna show the whole thing, right? So we need to calculate that. And the way we calculate that is by taking all of those values and crunching the numbers. So uh, actually, before I do that, so we can't just take this directly. We need to, um, we need to calculate the experience. Uh, so what I'll do is I will make another function just because I already did this one. I don't want to redo it. Um, and it makes it a bit more versatile. So public void, um, we'll say set and calculate experience. So we're going to call this one actually. We're, and then this one we'll call this one once it figures out the um, the range uh, to be illustrated. Wait, does that make sense? 
No, we need to edit the other one. Okay, that's fine then. That's fine. So what we need to pass in, or wait, no, no, no. I need to think about this for a sec. How did we do it in the, actually, let's find out. Because I've already done it, may as well reference it just to make sure um, that we get it right, right? Okay, so while that's loading in the background, um, the pieces of information that we want for the experience is um, current level minimum, max level, and then there should be a um, I thought there was more. Nope, not loaded yet. I actually don't remember exactly how I calculated that. I do remember I had to take into account the current level minimum and current level maximum. So I think I may need to subtract that from the total. Then that would mean I need total value. I need total value experience. I need this. Yeah, so we, we need that as well. Okay, um, let's, um, let's have a look at it and see how is experience calculated. So from here, we should be able to um, navigate to it. So we'll go to controller panel um i don't even remember there's there's so many files i think this is what i need it seems about right Okay, let's see. Can we find an experience something here? Okay, so I think we're kind of on the right track. Update XP bar. Okay. This is it right here. So we take, we need the relative experience, okay. And we need the relative next level experience. And then where's the, the max? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, so we need this logic here. That's what we need. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm just gonna grab that. It's a good thing we looked at it because I would have had to figure that out again. So I'm just going to paste that there for reference purposes. And then what we'll do is we'll go in and we will uh, modify it. Okay, so the first thing is um, we will need um, an integer. So relative experience current uh, means that we would need the current experience. So we'll get that passed in. It's not a big deal. And then we need the exp current level minimum okay so let's let's go like this so we'll say integer experience current integer current level minimum and then the other one is going to be integer um next level right so those are going to be our um are three values that we need. So then I should be able to remove that. Remove that. 
So that gives us the relative current. That means whatever's the total experience we have, subtract the current level minimum. That means we're chopping everything out of it to get the relative current XP. So if your experience, if you just hit that level, it's gonna be zero. If you're near the end of it, you're gonna be towards the higher end of it, but we're gonna get the, the end piece as well. So uh, this will be integer. And then we should be able to do the same thing to this one. So what we do for this one is we get the uh, the cap. So what we're doing is we're subtracting to get the, the range of whatever the current level is. So it doesn't matter if you're level one, level five, level seven of 11, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. Um, and then this one here is gonna be the float when it gets calculated into a percentage. So we need to make sure that these numbers are treated as floats so that they can be um, calculated with a percent value. Okay. And then at this point, we have the experience a value that we can use. Okay. So from here, we can say uh, basically what this is. Um, yeah, so this, this will need to be completely replaced. but I can borrow from it. So we'll grab that, bring that up into here, and then the EXP percent will still be treated the same. The percent is going to be the range now. So since we already have the percent, we can just use it directly. So we don't need that line. And then what we need is the uh, value current and next level. Yeah. Now we just need to call that function. Okay, so I'll just leave that one there for reference, but we're going to call uh, this function now. Okay, so things we need to pass in. Um, we need um, experience uh, current. Wait, or was it current experience? Something experience. Did I not expose it? I didn't expose it. That's why I couldn't get it. Okay, so we need to hit control R E. I want to disable the the set. I only want the get. So now I should be able to say uh, experience current. There we go. So current, and then we should be able to say um, experience uh, current level minimum. Wait, no. This one was supposed to be uh, pet current experience, then current level minimum, then um, experience um, next level. Okay. Sorry, that got a little bit confusing there. But yeah, you can see that it, it's something that we couldn't just set it directly. We had to calculate it based on the um, values that we have available to us, which is what allowed us to, to calculate the pet experience. So now um, we should be able to log in and the experience as well as, oh, I, uh, I have an error. What is my error? Oh, my test value, okay. Um, my test value, I don't care about that right now. Actually, I do. Uh, let's put in some something. Um, it is the total. Total will say is um, 1,000. Current will say is 100. Next level will say is 300. That way, when we run it in test mode, we still get the values, but um, wait. 
Um, oh, right. The function call changed. Okay, there we go. That should work. Hopefully. We'll see. It's possible. I may have broken some other things along the way, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Uh, I'm interested to see the experience bar actually show up. This will be a first. Okay, so we will uh, summon, uh, who do we summon? Let's summon Peaches, the OG original. Okay, so we'll select uh, Peaches and we wanna go with the basic information and there, whoa, that's not right. That's definitely not right. Okay. I may have overlooked the small detail. Just to confirm though, because I believe Peaches is max level. Let's, um, let's pick something else. I just want to see... Uh, maybe it's a, it's a logical condition. Uh, maybe I need to take a uh, max level into account, which I think I do. So we will summon a pet that's much lower level. So we'll say lemon cake. Okay. Basic info. Yeah, okay. So I need to take max level into account because this looks right to me, right? Because that means that it's showing me the range, right? Of course, I'm not going to just take this uh, uh, as an absolute. Uh, that's a lot of exp yeah, XP. Yeah, it's uh, that was a miscalculation, I think, somewhere. Okay, but I want to still test this. I want to see what is this, right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, old client. And I'm going to bring up the exact same pet just to make sure. And this is why we need the old client to still be functioning. Um, so what I'll do is I'll log in. So this one is lemon cake. So we'll go to um, pets, lemon cake, summon, select it. Yeah, so that looks right, right? So the calculation worked correctly. It shows experience uh, 147 out of 162, and the experience bar shows exactly in roughly the right percentage location, right? It's because this bar is a bit wider, and uh, height-wise, it's also vertically longer. So that's why it looks a slightly different, but it is correct. So this, I know, is correct now. The condition that we need to take is also the max level. So what happens um, when it's at max level that resulted in that really big number and it looked kind of messed up, we need, to, we need to take that into account as well. So, um, idiocr idiocracy really okay uh that's fine uh compared to the workflow in flash uh what are your thoughts on working in unity do you miss the ease of working in flash that is a great question i still use flash for a lot of things uh if i need to let's say a rapid prototype something or if i just want to crunch some numbers or something I still fall back to Flash just because it's so simple to use. But once you get the hang of using Unity and using Unity, uh, even on um, just past the very, very entry level and you get access to this kind of properties in the inspector where you can drag and drop stuff, the way the components work where you can add components, you can look at values in real time using serialized fields, the way that Unity treats object-oriented programming is a bit different to be honest. There is an adjustation period. But once you get the hang of it, Unity is so powerful that you can't compare them, honestly, you can't. But 
that doesn't mean Flash still doesn't have its strengths. It's still viable. Let's say you want to rapid prototype something. So for when I want to do the number crunching and I want to see some numbers and I just want to calculate stuff, I'll default to Flash. When I want to do the artwork, I go to Flash, right? Because I like working in, I find the the usability of the tools of the vector arts and whatnot, uh, vector graphics creation. I find it really intuitive because I've just used it for so long that I'm very comfortable with it. Unity does not have anything even remotely close to Flash in terms of, um, asset creation, like creating artwork, uh, vector or sprites, uh, whether they're bitmap or vector, I mean. But each one of them has their pros and cons. Animating in Unity is, um, is way more powerful. It still has timeline, similar to that of Flash, where you can set keyframes, augment and, and whatnot, but it's just so much more powerful. But again, it has that learning curve difference. And that learning curve uh, can be, uh, it, it can kind of turn you away initially. Because I, I I looked at Unity a long time ago. I was like, okay, I, I don't want to get into this. I, I already know Flash. Flash is going to be here for, you know, X amount of time. Unity is this new thing. This is back in the day, of course. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe I'll reconsider Unity at a later time. So I just continued to use Flash. This is, again, back in the day. But there's always those limitations in Flash and the performance. Oh, don't even get me started on the performance. Unity uses GPU. Flash does not right? You have access to GPU level performance. It has shaders, it has particle effects, it has so many different things that are very advantageous in my opinion, but it also has its drawbacks. Unity is not perfect. It's not for everybody, right? If you want to do rapid prototyping, and things of that sort, Flash is probably still the better choice. Unity is, is pretty chunky in terms of that. And if, if you want to just do timeline animations and do really simple stuff and you have no intention of exporting to a platform, really, uh, Flash might still be your go-to if you're comfortable with it, right? But it, it's a delicate balance. I can't say one is completely better than the other uh, across the board. But what I can't say, though, is what Unity does, it does very well. And it's only going to continue to get better. So if you're a Flash developer and you've worked with Flash and you're looking to transition, I would say in my experience, there is that learning curve. But in the long term, it's the right decision to do. And you'll see the benefit of it once you get past that initial learning phase of it, right? And then the more deeper you get into it, the more you realize how powerful Unity is. Because I'm still, I, I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living. I do this on my spare time because I enjoy making stuff and I enjoy working on the project. So that's something that um, you'll need to decide for yourself. Are you willing to invest the time into learning it? Maybe not even all at once, right? Gradually, little bits and pieces here and there. YouTube's great for that, right? Or just get in there and just start messing around with it and just get the hang of the interface and how it works first. And then um, start doing these little, little things and gradually make it more and more complex. Because you need to understand how their component system works, rigid body event system, uh, how they use Canvas for UI and things of that sort, how their buttons work, how to optimize, what to optimize, shaders, when to use something, when not to use something kind of thing. I'm still learning a lot of that stuff myself, right? So yeah, I, I hope that's helpful for you, but um, it really comes down to you. What do you want to do? What do you want to learn? What are you comfortable with? Thank you very much for the thorough answer. What was your primary source of learning Unity when you started? The official tutorials, YouTube videos, a book, something else? Uh, me, I'm one of those guys that dives in, but to dive in, you need a basic foundation. You have to have a basic foundation. 
But again, what I usually do, in, but not everyone's the same, right? What I usually do is I go in there and I look at it as, um, is, is this something I want to learn first? How much time do I have to allocate? Okay, I'm, I'm planning on being invested. Okay, cool. Download it, install it, right? And then have navigate through the interface first go go into these areas see what's what where where's these settings where's the project settings where's the build settings right all that kind of stuff where and what is here how do you install um stuff using the um unity uh sorry the name slips my mind but the unity package manager right how do you manage packages right how do you do uh performance testing right because unity comes built in with the ability to um oh, what do you call it um sorry the name again slips my mind uh what was it called again so inside of the build settings, profiler, that's it, right? So how do you use the profiler? How do you build to a specific device? How do you, you know, manage and optimize a different assets? How do you use their, their sprite editor? How do you use their sprite atlas? All of that stuff. So I would suggest just coming in here, first thing is just look at all this stuff. It's not gonna make sense, but you'll get it basic concept of where things are and how the layout is, right? Then go for the YouTube videos. The YouTube videos, oh, my camera died. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I do have a potato cam. Let's see, does that pick up? I'm using an, an old Android phone for my um for my camera so anytime i go into certain uh areas where uh, unity uses the adb um android bridge no android developer bridge anytime it uses that to check right it disconnects right uh anyway uh so that's what i would recommend is um is looking at the interface first then go for the youtube videos there's some really good youtube videos some great youtube guys that make um some solid stuff um what's um let's see what can i recommend here for you youtube and just look for um unity um tutorial right and you'll get a whole bunch of them. Brackies, uh, he's solid. He stopped making videos, but Brackies is a great resource. He goes uh, from the basic stuff to the more advanced stuff. Not too advanced, but uh, he's pretty good. So he's well known. Um, and then uh, just a look through it. There's so many good tutorials. Pick one. What I would suggest is search for uh, Unity Tutorial um, Introduction, right? And, and you can just learn uh, and they will take you step by step through the UI, right? So then you can match what you've just viewed in the application UI and come and see someone go through it step by step and explain it to you what each one does, right? And then once you're done watching that video, go back up here, right? And follow that video. If you have two screens at the same time, you can watch the video and follow it along at the same time. That works really well, right? Um, and then from there, what you can do is slowly work your way up and do what's traditionally known, tested, and true. Start with Hello World, right? And get into some of the more... Uh, Push your, push your limits a little bit. It's okay to not know something and be just outside of your comfort zone, but know that those videos on YouTube, there is a bajillion of them covering everything from the most basic stuff to things that are so advanced, they go even above my head uh, because I, I just haven't had a chance yet to learn it to that degree. So that would be my recommendation personally, because videos I think are visual and we're all visual learners. It really helps. Um, thank you for the answer. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that's helpful for you. And even like these things that I do, right? You may, you may not understand it to the, to the depth of 
the what I'm doing, but conceptually, there's still stuff you can learn from it. Not just me, but there's other people on Twitch that also broadcast uh, that do this kind of stuff. Maybe not to the same way that I do it, but there's a lot of other people that share this kind of knowledge. And it's just all a part of, you know, being a part of a community, learning and just having fun at the end of the day, because it's something that you want to do and it's something that you want to enjoy doing. So hopefully you're doing what you enjoy doing and you keep on doing it for the foreseeable future. Okay, so heading back to this, um, the reason why we got that weird number is we need to take this into account. Um, what we need to do is take into account if is max level. If is max level, what do we do? What do we do on the old client, right? I like that you think out loud while working in Unity. It makes it easier to understand when watching. Thank you. That's exactly why I do it. Because um, uh, it sure, like it's a little bit more challenging to do it because, and you'll see me tunnel vision and I'll forget that the camera is there. I'll forget the microphone is there. I'll often forget which screen I'm showing you guys, but um, I do it for you guys and to give you guys a behind the scenes look of what's going on in terms of the uh, development of the project so that you get to see kind of um, what's going on and see my thought logic. Um, sure, when I'm working off camera, I'm, I'm more efficient. I, I can go deeper into the logic because I don't necessarily need to say it out loud, but it's more or less kind of the same. All right, so let's have a look at this here. I want to summon a pet that is max level. So what we'll do is we'll switch over to what's a max level pet? Peaches, okay. So we'll bring up Peaches. So when it's max level, oh. Okay. Um, that's what we need to do for max level. So that's what I'll do. I, I don't agree with the percentage being at the beginning. I think what I'll do is I'll make the percentage a hundred, but at the text will say max. I like that. Let's go with that, right? You guys agree with me, right? Uh, percentage should be at the end, not at the beginning. Right? Because I think it makes more sense. Symbolically, it means you're at the end, not at the beginning. That, that's that's kind of my, my logic behind it. Okay. I subscribe to you in your YouTube channel, uh, so I'll keep an eye out for your updates. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, there's... Um, the YouTube videos that I make are really these. I, I archive them on YouTube because I believe there's educational value as well as entertainment value. Um, and I, I will in the future look into making other YouTube videos, but for right now, that's kind of the idea. My dev journal is there. If you are interested in learning about just the cliff notes of the progress, there's the Discord channel, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. And I'm forgetting something, but you get the idea. Uh, yeah, the official website and the form. Okay, so uh, Angry Shark Games. Wow, looks like a nice game. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's fix this percentage thing. So if it is max level, we don't care what the current percentage is. We don't care what the max is. What we want to do is just go straight to it. So if it is max level... What can we do? I think we're going to have to treat it slightly different if it's max level. What we can do is if it's max level, we can just set the value. So we can set uh, value equals 1F. So that's the, the percentage. And then what we can do is we can set text equals max, right? Yeah, let's let's see that. Let's see uh, what that looks like when we. Um, I think that should work. 
or it'll completely break in a blazing glory, but that's okay too. All right, so let's log in here. All right, I had my other client logged in. I just kicked it. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we go here. Um, we will go to our pets. We'll summon. Um, we had cheesy puffs. Let's go with uh, let's go with peaches because that's the one that broke before. So we'll summon uh, peaches, and we want to interact with peaches, and we want the basic info. And there we go. Yeah. Okay. So that's correct. That works, right? That's what we wanted. There's a, a bunch of white space here. So what I'm thinking is uh, I'll take this whole panel and kind of scale it down uh, width wise. It's a bit too big, but right now I don't care. So our next step here is to get the, uh, the health, the mana and the stamina to populate correctly. So let's see, uh, not just that, actually, we need to be able to get out of this. So right now we're stuck, right? There's, there's no way that you can uh, remove this panel. Once you bring it up, that's it. You're committed. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So we need to do that too, but I, I'll get to that later and the bouncy effects and visual stuff. I don't know if I'll get to that quite yet, but uh, we'll definitely look into that. So what I want to do is um, I want to address the health, the mana, and the stamina. I want to see why are they coming up as zeros? Because I'm pretty sure we have a synchronization packet that comes from the server that gives us those values. And then we're taking those values right here. So we're reading them. We're passing them in. But these are zero, 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 zero is kind of why it's coming out as zeros. Um, yeah, so let's, you started making, uh, eight years ago, huh? Uh, McBobber, uh, yes and no, actually, this is an old flash game that I made, um, 11 years ago not eight, 11 years ago. Uh, this, the goal of it was for, to learn, right? Cause there was no other opportunity that I had even working as a programmer, um, as a full-time job, uh, back in the day, I just couldn't get an opportunity to make something that I could really learn from this project. I made it in flash action script three, and it was the best educational experience I could possibly ask for, for development and games and programming. I learned so much from making this that I cannot put it into words how valuable that information was for me because I had to do everything myself, including the coordination of um, not just the story, the tools needed, everything. I had to make it myself. And that was the idea. It's for it to be educational and it served its purpose and it was amazing. And it was something that I, if, if you are the type of person that can commit to something like that long-term to learn with the intention of learning from it, I highly recommend doing a big project. Once you get past the initial, um, you need to go past the basics, right? You need to be at a intermediate level to be able to take on something like this big. But that doesn't mean you can't take on something that's a bit too big for you, even at an entry level. You don't have to complete it. It's not about completing it. It's not about finishing a product. It's not about having a million players playing your game. It's about making something that you enjoy, learn from it, and then share it with the community and see what comes from it, right? And that's what I did. And that's where we are now. So if you look at the dev journal entries, I explained that um, at 2020, when the whole um, zombie apocalypse happened, um, and we all started working from home, right? Uh, Flash was, sorry, this was 2019. Uh, Flash was reaching end of life at 2020. My choice was to completely shut down the project and walk away from it or pick it up, 
rebuild the client, make it cross-platform, which is exactly what I'm doing. So it's going to work on uh, iOS, it's gonna work on Mac OS X, it's gonna work on Windows, it's gonna work on Android. It doesn't matter what device you're gonna be using, as long as it meets the minimum hardware specifications, it's going to work. It's going to work the same on any device with touchscreen, mouse and keyboard, gamepad. It doesn't matter if it's an Android phone, it doesn't matter if it's your uh, iPad, it doesn't matter. It's gonna work on all of those and I'm designing it from the ground up with that in mind. That's why you'll see me make certain decisions that make it compatible for that type of uh, usability, right? So that's kinda the, uh, the direction I've been going and the goal with this Unity client is similar to what I did back then 10, 11 years ago with Flash and have it be another great educational experience for me and for you guys. So I can share it with you guys what goes on behind the scenes with the project and you get to see a project being made in front of you and one day in the not so distant future, okay, not this year, but sometime maybe next year, we'll have a early playable alpha where you can jump in and play just like how the Flash client is still playable right now. You can play it, the old Flash client with a standalone Adobe Flash projector and just load the, uh, the Swift file and you can still play it. So that's the idea with the new Unity uh, client. Um, and it's something that I'm, uh, I'm working towards and I'm learning every day. I'm learning new stuff. Unity is very, very deep in terms of all the stuff that it has. Like, wow, I'm barely scratching the surface on some of the stuff that I know. But even what I know, you can see what I'm able to put together. So imagine someone who's a lot more experienced and a seasoned programmer than myself. What can they do if I can do this, right? So it's really, it, it, it's a tool, right? And the limit it, it is not even your imagination. It's, it's how far do you want to push your creativity and what kind of commitment do you have to making something for yourself and learning from it in the process? Um, if you don't mind me asking, what's your day job these days? Uh, it's nothing like this. It's nowhere as interesting as this. It's just another job that allows me to get by. Um, if it's programming, what kind of domain? Nothing programming related. I do use a computer. And one of the challenges is that I use the computer for my day job and it's a different keyboard than the one that I have at home, which is this one. It's softer. It's more like a laptop type keyboard because it's softer because I, I, I jam the buttons and it kind of hurts my fingers after pressing buttons uh, a million times. So uh, you'll see me mispress buttons because the keyboard is, is slightly different in its layout. And uh, that's also a challenge that I'm, I'm working on to improve on it. But uh, it's okay though, it's, it's all part of the fun, right? Like if I didn't enjoy doing this, I wouldn't be doing it, simply put. And I like sharing it with uh, you guys and the community because the community, even though it's it's small little Discord community, it's a positive community. And that's what I like. I like those positive interactions. You can go into any community and you can just troll and, you know, you go into there and, and nobody's really talking to each other, right? To me, that's not really much of a community. I, I want a community where you... you it's something you enjoy going into. It's something where you can talk to people without every second word being the F word or, uh, you know, things of that sort, right? It, to me, it, it just takes the enjoyment out of it. And that's what I'm trying to build as well is a, is a positive community of people where the interactions are positive and it, it encourages more positivity as a result of that. Okay, so. What I need to do is we need to figure this out. The current, the max, and these values, we need to track down the TCP IP socket uh, packet that has that information, see what are we doing? Because from what we were doing, we, we were looking at this stuff, uh, but we, I don't think we're, we're processing one of the packets that's coming in, or maybe we're missing it, I don't know. 
Are we missing a packet? I don't think so. Do you take any time to learn uh, C sharp formally or do you know it already or did you just pick it up what you needed C sharp as you went along and you used fundamentals and another language that you knew already? Um, you're on the right track. I, I don't have any C sharp training. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I'm entirely self-taught and I'm very comfortable with being self-taught. Um, actually, that's not true. I went to a private college for a year that was learn at your own pace. And what that taught me a valuable lesson is I don't need to go to school to learn. I just need the motivation and the intention to do it. And I will do it. Hence where we are now. So uh, what happened when I was going to school for that one year of college was that I paid a ridiculous amount of money and they gave you this huge stack of books that were let's just say more than a little overpriced um anyway and it's learn at your own price it goes okay here you go read through these books and do these lessons i'm like seriously that's it they're like yeah okay so i went through the books and i thought their their books were terrible um it, it was too much fluff and not enough actual valuable information. I think if you're going to explain something to some detail, the goal shouldn't be to put as many characters or as many uh, words as you can on a page. It should be the opposite. It should be use the minimal amount of words, but get the point across. That should be the goal. If a textbook to me has a thousand pages, but really there's only so many real lessons in there you could probably bring it down to about 200 300 pages um you need to kind of rethink what why do you really have those extra pages right anyway that's that's besides the point my point was that the lesson that i learned after completing that is one I'm very capable of learning anything. It doesn't matter what it is. So are you. Don't kid yourself. If you commit to it and if you really follow through with it, set yourself a schedule, motivate yourself, whatever it is, you can do it. It's just that everyone learns at a different curve, right? For me, my my learning curve initially was pretty rough when I was learning programming because even before that, way back when I was like 15, I, I taught myself uh, HTML and I had difficulties understanding how people made games because I thought HTML was programming. HTML is not programming. HTML is HTML, right? But what it taught me was structured characters and logic. From there, right, I picked up um, ActionScript uh, 1 way back in the day, and I was terrible at it. Uh, I had difficulties figuring out how to use Flash and ActionScript and all that stuff back in the day. It was not an enjoyable experience. But still, I stayed with it. I read up on it. Back in the day, there was no Google. None of the search engines. There was no YouTube. There's no Google. There's nothing. High-speed internet just came out, right? Uh, so we're still, a lot of people are still using dial-up. Not even a 56K modem, the 33.6K modem. Yes, it takes away your phone line. You can't use phone and be on the internet at the same time. That's how long ago I'm talking about. Um, so uh, the lesson that I learned uh, and whatever resources I could get off the internet was very limited at that time was that I can learn something if I put my mind to it. I can learn something if I'm interested in it and I'm interested in learning. That's the way it's always been. We all are, right? But the lessons that you learn and what you learn has to follow and fit your learning style. Everyone has a learning style. That's why I had terrible grades when I was in school, right? I was the kid that would fall asleep in class and the teacher would get so angry at me that they would send me to the principal's office. I would go to the principal's office. The principal looks at me and he's like, you fell asleep in class again, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, but you know, like I can't help it, right? 
It's just the way that it is. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, undermine the educational system, if you want to call it that. But it's just the way that it is, right? We all learn things differently. We all learn at a different pace. We all have different interests. We all pick up things differently, right? Like there's some things that I'm probably terrible at right but there's those same things you might be really good at it and you'll pick it up a lot faster than i will right it's just the way it is anyway i think i made my point okay um let's look at this packet because i need to i need to get the right information we need the current and maximum. So let's have a look at where does that information come from? Because I know where it should be stored in theory, but where does it come from? In what packet, uh, what synchronization packet? Okay, so let's have a look at it. What we want is the HP and, and whatnot. So where is that information? What we want is HP current, HP max, uh, mana power. Why did I call it MP? I really should have called it mana. Whatever, I'll I'll fix it later. I don't want to get into that right now. Um, and then we have stamina current and we have stamina maximum. So we'll get into that. This is what I want to see populated. So let's look at HP, for example. So there's two references. One is... when we access it so we're reading it and here's where we're setting it when we're setting it we're setting it from this point let's uh control k l so we clear the bookmarks and we'll go control k k so we'll set this bookmark just so i can jump to it so i won't have to keep looking for it right but what what is this packet because this definitely comes from the server so let's trace it backward um so event manager that's the packet we're looking for so let's go to socket in Okay, so here's the packet that comes in that has our pet information. Okay, so let's jump to that bookmark, KN, control KN. What I want to see is I want to, uh, let's go with uh, debug.log. And we'll say, uh, we'll color this text. So we'll go with uh, generic functions dot text uh, color. Um, and then we'll use a uh, hex color um, and we'll go with the uh, soft blue just because it stands out. And what I want to see is I want to see um, when this gets called and I want to see what this value is, is basically what I'm looking at. And I'll just indent it two times. Okay, I want to see if this is being called at all. So if this is being called, we should see it. If it's not being called, then we'll see that too. Uh, but I think that serves a different purpose. I think I may need to reference the old Flash client to see um, how, do we, how do we get that information? What am I missing? I have a feeling I'm overlooking something that I did in the old Flash client. I think I know. I think I vaguely remember something. Let's uh, let's have a look at this because I think this is going to fail. Right? So let's see. What do we got here? Nothing. Okay. We'll clear that. So we will um, bring up our pets. Oops. Pets. And we'll bring up, um, let's go with Cheesy Puffs, right? I want to clear this again because I want to see what the outputs are. So click Summon. And I don't see those stats. We should have gotten it, right? Uh, if we gotten it, and let's have a look at this and see, are we missing any packets? Okay, so we're handling all the packets or else they should have popped up. Okay. I'm overlooking something. Okay. So let's go back to the old client. So what do we do here? There has to be, I think a request packet is what we're missing. When we summon a pet or when we select 
I think it's when we select the pet. I think that's what it is. Let's see, what, what do we do here? Let's see what stands out. Okay, so you'll have to forgive me. This is 10 year old code. It's gonna look um, pretty bad in some areas. Okay, so when we say show creature model, check data requirements. Oh, that looks promising. Let's jump to that. What is check data requirements? Construct, add it to stage. Okay, so that's maybe not so useful. Oh, this looks good. Yeah. Request pet info owner. I think I'm missing this call, but where do we call this check from? The check is called right when it's um, added to stage. Okay, so that's what I'm missing. I'm missing exactly that. So we're missing a packet. So what we need to do is when the screen comes up, we don't even have to put it on the screen. We can do it on when you, we can do it when you summon the pet. On successful summon of a pet, what we can do is on a successful summon of the pet, then we'll request the information. So when we go to bring up the screen, that information is available. Or the current system, what this does in the old Flash client is it would, um, when you bring up the screen, right now it doesn't show that because it just happens so fast. Um, what it does is um, it'll show you a please wait um, screen overlay that comes up on top, it'll send that request to the server, it'll wait for the response, it gets the response, processes the information, populates the information, removes the please wait screen. I don't wanna do that though. Let's just get it working for now and then we'll have a look at it later. Let's, let's get that packet going. So this packet here is, um, we sent two actually. Oh, we need both the information and we need the pet equipment. Oh yeah, we do need that too. May as well do both. Okay. I'm getting my shortcuts mixed up. I have so many applications open uh, or not so many applications open. I'm jumping between so many applications. I'm getting my shortcuts mixed up. Okay, so what we want is both of these function calls. We want request a pet info owner and we want a uh, request user inventory items. Wait, request user inventory item. Uh, that's not the right call. Request pet equipment inventory basic. And then we send our pet ID. Why do we need to send pet ID? Because the server will already know what pet we have active. The only time we can send this is if we have a pet active. Okay, either way. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to call these. I'm just going to grab these. Um, we'll bring it here. Uh, so for right now, we'll just make it work. So that means um, we can't access that information. Oh, we can't access that information right away. That's why it's failing. So if it's connected to server, what we need to do is we can show some of the information. So we can show uh, some of the information um, that is available. Right, so that'll be the information we can show. And then we can um, send the uh, request to the server for more uh, detailed information. Okay, so the pet equipment one, 
we won't need it here. This one we'll need here. The pet equipment will be for the pet panel when we get to the pet inventory panel. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at that. What are these functions? So this one here, I'm gonna grab both of them and I'm gonna bring them in just because uh, we may as well uh, add them both now. So this will be on the socket out. We'll go down here, we'll paste that one there and then we'll go grab the other one as well. Okay, so we'll change them from action script to um, C sharp. Okay, so that should be that one. And then this one, same idea. This one has pet ID. Not sure why we need that because the server really should know what pet you have active and you should only be able to pull the information on the current active pet. Oh, uh, push needs to be add. Okay, so now we have both of those. What we want to do is we want to call um, single framework dot instance dot um, IO manager. We want to send the server out and we want to request um, pet info owner, right? So when we call that, that will get us this information. That means we can't set these here. We need to wait for the server to get back to us with that. And then once we got that information back, then we can um, set these values and that should work. Um, of course, if we may want to have a please wait or retrieving or, or something, uh, what I mean is in this area, So in this area, when you bring up this information, right? So this information will not populate right away. Some of this stuff will populate that's already available, but anything that's not yet available, what we can say is um, please wait or, or something because it there's a certain amount of time for the full round trip, depending on your, your ping to the server, right? Because I know some people are farther away and there's only one server, right? So it could be anywhere between, if you're close by, it could be 25 milliseconds. It'll be a blink of an eye. You won't even really see it. Um, or uh, it could be some of the other users who are farther away who get upwards of, or they have unstable internet. They could get anywhere from between 500 milliseconds all the way up to a full second uh, of this information not being populated. So when you bring this panel up, it'll look like it's lagging as most people call it, but lag isn't the right term. It's, it's latency. Um, uh, the, of the uh, the packet of information going to the server, the server uh, validating it and then sending you back that information and then processing it and displaying it. So that's kind of the idea. Um, but let's, uh, let's work on it uh, one step at a time. So when we send this request to the server though, what happens, okay? So we're sending a uh, header pet owner info. That means this stuff is not going to be set. So when the server comes back to us, it should give us back the same packet. Let's just make sure that it does. And we'll see it um, in just a sec. And we'll see what that information consists of. Okay. So we'll log in. Okay. We will summon our pet. We'll go with, um, who do we want to summon? Let's go with, uh, let's go with peaches. Okay. 
so from here, when we click on it, that's when we should get, what's this? Oh yeah, that's, that's whatever, just output. Okay, so we wanna interact with peaches and then we wanna go with basic information. Okay, so that means the package should have been sent. Um, how do we know? Well, we'll have a look at what's got sent. And this is why I have my own custom um, little uh, logger here, which I find very useful. And there it is right there. So this is an unhandled packet. We sent, we sent POI, what is POI? Pet owner information. Okay, so we're requesting uh, pet owner um, or PIO. Wait, is that the right one? It is POI. So we're sending POI over here. So it's actually this packet that we're sending. So we're sending POI and then we're receiving PPIO peaches and then here's all the information that we need to uh, parse through okay so there's the body of the packet right uh, and then this is telling us that this packet is not yet handled so that means that is that's a success right there okay so we need to handle that packet so on the in when we get it back what we're getting is uh, PPIO right so uh, pet private information owner that's what it gives us um, back. So we need to handle that packet. We'll just duplicate this line. Okay, paste that, wait, what happened there? Okay, so we need to add that packet to our manager and this one is the pet where's our pet category user pet related packets okay so we'll go with a public constant integer it'll be the next id okay so then now that we have the ID for the event, we can go to the My Pets Manager and we can listen in for this particular event. Where's our um, listeners? Okay, right here. So I'll just hit Control D, duplicate that line. This is the ID that I wanna listen to and then the function uh, that it will call. So it's gonna be handle uh, private, handle uh, pet private, information owner okay and then we'll of course add it to the remove as well don't want to forget that part of it right okay and then alt enter enter and then f12 to jump to it i like that functionality but we're going to move this function farther down i don't want it to be uh quite over here we'll move it farther down below the others So that's still our listeners, listener, 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 listener. Okay, right here. So we'll add it to here. So we'll need to get this information. Okay, but what does that come with though? So over here, this is why we have the old client. We can reference it and go uh, PPIO. Okay, so this is what it consists of. This is how it breaks down. And it has 65, oh wow, that's a heavy one. So that comes with everything. That's a lot of info. Okay, but that's, that's everything uh, pretty much about your pet. Uh, actually, sorry, that's not every, that's not the inventory. That's just your pet information. There's still more. I know, right? Okay, um, okay, but that's good. So this, this is what we want and we need to take that, we need to parse it, we need to process it and then we can access all of that good information. So what we need to do is we need to treat it similar to um, this one. We need to get the packet 
first. So I'll just sample from here. And we'll bring that over here. So from this point, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this from here just because it's it's structured and we need to follow that structure. So we're gonna grab that right from there to here. We're gonna grab that, copy it to clipboard. And we're gonna paste it right in here and then we're gonna sample it. Okay, so how does it work? Um, the index two position will have everything pet equipment yeah no that's commented out that's i think legacy yeah it doesn't make sense to have pet equipment in here yeah no pet equipment is a separate packet that's the next one um or something like the next one uh, we'll uh we'll definitely get to it but anyway uh let's see so what we need to do is we need to start parsing through this information. So we need to get all of the info first, which is the pet info. So what I'm thinking is I'll just take all of this and just copy it. Wait, actually, no, that's not what I want to do here. I want just this. What I want is string pet info. I'm going to treat it a bit different uh, or not different, but similar uh, with the other. So it's consistent. So this, this variable.
I don't hear any sound. Sorry, sorry, that's my bad. I was jumping through the screens like this and I pressed the mic mute button. I'm sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize it. Uh, thank you for letting me know, though. Um, how long was I muted for? And I didn't even realize it. I don't know. But, um, okay. Uh, I, I keep doing that. Uh, sorry, there's just too many buttons. Can't we just reduce the number of buttons on everything? Like, just, I don't know. Why does a keyboard need so many buttons? I don't know. Okay. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get access to our pet object. Yeah, this is what I want. I want this reference. Actually, I'll copy that to clipboard. I'll bring it down to here because I want to check if we have an active pet and I want to use that. So if, um, if object my pet equals that and if um, object my pet equals null return um, and we'll say debug.log Uh, generic functions and we'll say text color and we'll make it um, red. So we'll go generic functions dot hex color red. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, no pet um, active. Uh, my active pet is null. Okay. So that, that will address that. But from there, we now have access to this. So then we can use that dot uh, pet information. And we're going to pass in all of it as one variable. And this will be responsible for parsing through it. So all of this stuff here, what we can do is we can just cut that and then go down here to that one uh, function that we just made, the new one at the very bottom. Okay, so this will be where we store everything. And I do mean everything, because that's a lot. Uh, we're not going to do all of it, just because I, I don't really want to do all of that right now. I just want the the fields that I want right now. And then we'll come back and we'll do the rest of it. I just want to get the information displaying. Um, and then we'll, we really should be doing all of this, because we're going to need it in the future some point. Some of this stuff I don't quite understand, like this sub object. Wait, no, it's not a sub object. Never mind, I'm misreading it. Okay, anyway, so from this point, what we can do is we can take um, this. And this will be a string array. And we should be able to split. That should work. Oh, we need to split the string. Okay. So from here, we now have access to be able to set all of these, but we need to get the correct index, right? So what we want to do is we want to set, oh, we even have title here. That's where title comes in. Okay. Uh, let's go with um, title. Title? Wait, do I not have title? I don't have title. Okay, let's not sidetrack then. We'll just go with for the HP stuff. So we'll just uh, shift alt and we'll just grab these and we'll bring that down. And I'll just focus on, why does it do that? Interesting. 
I don't think it should do that. Or did I copy it incorrectly? Yeah, it shouldn't have done that. I think it kind of misunderstood. Okay, so shift alt so we can do multi-line edit. Right? I just want to indent it. Oh, they're all, um, whoops, they're all integers. So we'll set them to uh, zero. Okay, so from here, we should be able to get HP, so right there. I wonder, can we copy like this and then go here and then paste? Nice. That's cool. Okay, but we still need to convert it uh, from that um, to a uh, integer. So we need to say... Um, int in 32 dot parse yeah so we need to do that as well it should be easy enough we'll just grab this here and we'll uh, copy it to clipboard Okay, so we'll just shift alt select these lines, control V to paste it in. I really like that. Oops. Oh no, I'm breaking it. Don't break, please. Okay, so that should give us our values, right? But this is when it sets it. Um, what we need to do is... Um, what we need to do is after the values are set, that's when we can access it, right? So we need to know when are these values processed and when are they set? Because that's when the, um, the information is available for us to... Um, be able to access it. So I'm not going to worry about the other stuff just yet because there's quite a bit of information there. Um, what I want is just this. So right after we set it, what I want to do is I want to dispatch event and we're going to say um, my pet information processed so we dispatch event my pet information processed okay um, yeah that should be it so we'll say private void and we'll make the function right here. Um, wait, does my pet manager not dispatch any events? Really? Oh, it does, it's up here. Okay, so I put it in the wrong location. Let's, uh, let's group all the dispatches together. Actually, they should all be farther down. Whatever, I'll, I'll just group them together for now. All right, so what it's going to do is um, it's just going to dispatch the event. So we'll just copy one of these. The dispatcher is going to be this low battery. That's fine. That's okay. However, we need to give it an event ID. So we need to say, um, oops, wrong button, public constant int, and we need to say, um, what do we need to say? Manager my um, pet information processed. Okay, and we'll just grab the next ID. 
Okay, so that's the ID of the event that we're going to dispatch. So now we have it dispatched, but we need to listen in to this ID. And where do we listen to the ID? We listen to it right here in the add listener. But we don't have one yet. I thought we did. Okay. We don't have one yet. That's fine. We'll we'll add one. But what it needs to do is it needs to call um, a single framework. Um, wait, I have caps lock on. Instance dot um, check initialized. So that's an important one. And then we can say um, add. Let's just create the functions. Public, 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 public. And we'll add our add and remove event listeners down here. So we'll say a private void add event listeners. And then this one will be our remove um, event listeners. And same idea as before, we'll check if it's in the process of being destroyed. Uh, single framework dot instance equals null. If it equals null, we want to return. And then same if the event system is in the process of being destroyed or has just recently been destroyed. Okay, now we can, oh, we need to add them first. Uh, so in the start, right after we call check initialized, we can add that. In the destroy, we need to have a um, public, uh, actually we can just go on destroy. Oh, yeah, okay, it creates it for us, nice. Okay, so here we add the remove event listeners. Is that what we want on the... That's fine. This should still work. If I need to restructure some of the logic, like sequence of execution and whatnot, I can do that later. But what we want is we want to be able to add that listener. So that this listener ID is specifically what we're looking for. So single framework instance dot event manager dot add event listener. And we need to give it the event uh, manager, the event ID, who's dispatching it. It'll be single framework dot instance dot uh, my pets manager. And then the function is going to be handle, um, handle my pet information. Oops, processed. I just realized I, I misspelled that. That's okay. So then we'll do the remove as well before I do anything else, just so I don't forget. Okay. And then alt enter, enter, and it'll create the function for us. So at this point, we can access this. So at that point, we can set that. We can set the the other stuff too, to all of it. But we need to get access to the pet object again. Pet object. Let's just um, simplify it a little bit. If pet object does not equal null, then we will set these. And we'll just indent them. Okay, that should, this should now be called after we get that information. So in theory, in theory, that should work but we'll see how it actually goes in practice. I'm just double checking to make sure I didn't overlook anything else. Okay, I think we're ready to test it. I think we're ready to have a test and uh, see what we get.
Okay, so we'll log in as usual. And then we'll go to my pets and let's summon uh, peaches again. Sure. Okay. Want to interact with peaches and we want to see basic information. And there we go. Nice. There's still the, the type, the title, and what else I forget. But yeah, so I think it turned out well. It, it's still, it, it's definitely too wide. Width wise, it's definitely too wide, but that's a, that's a visual thing. I'll, I'll clean this up uh, at a later time and make it look really good. Um, this is going to be the idea, right? And we need to be able to escape out of this too. Like right now, when you open this panel up, there's no way out. It, it's, it, you're stuck, right? There, there's no closing this panel. Even though you can, you can still select past it, which you're not really supposed to, but uh, still, I think it looks pretty good. Nice. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that's pretty good. I would say that that's working. Um, so we can do all the other information pieces as well because type and title come into that same big packet of information that comes from the server as well as uh, other information that we will later want to access anyway, right? So let's, uh, let's go and handle that information um, when it comes in from the server. So we need to handle this big bulky thing. Okay. So what we need is name, current level, title. Oh, it gives you everything, even the redundant stuff. Oh, what? Pet growth, pet growth. Oh, pet growth, uh, right. The, the value for the pet growth. Okay, so we get everything. Okay. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's handle the rest of it. So what we need to do is we need to handle this block. We already have it, so I don't know if we want to set it as well. Um, like name and current level, we have title. We don't have title. We need to add. We need to add title. Let's um, let's add title to our variables list. Where are we? Do I really not have title? No, I don't. I don't see title. If it was here, it would be right here, basically. Okay, so that would be our title. Let's bookmark this. Actually, let's clear all the bookmarks, control KK. So we set that bookmark there because I'm going to be jumping back and forth quite a bit. Um, and then go control KK and we'll bookmark this. All right, so title is just directly going to be set. Uh, current level, I believe um, we have um, current level what about level pet level oh, i see so i i named it a bit differently uh that's okay uh, so it'll be int uh 32 dot parse okay name we already have so i'm i'm not sure we need to really set it But I mean, it's there, right? Um, okay. Uh, so experience, sure, we can. We can, I guess, just set all of them. So this one is experience current, pet current exp. 
And then this one is um, EXP um, current level minimum. And then this one will be EXP uh, next level. And then we have um, pet growth. We don't have that yet. That's why I like bookmarks, is you can just jump from one location to another. Okay, so this needs um, int32 parse, because these are um, integers. Level and next level and this one. Okay, I can do all of them at the same time then. Let's just indent these. Use shift alt down down and then just paste. Okay. Okay, so that's that block. So that means now we should have access to these. Of course, I need to make the variables public so we can access them or sorry, not public, uh, I meant um, encapsulate them. Uh, so then we can access them publicly, uh, but it'll only be set from here. So we'll only be able to get it, meaning it's read only. This is the only location that it's set from, but it'll be accessible uh, publicly as long as you get access to that object. Okay, so that's that block. And then the, actually, I like this. Let's go with that. And then we have advanced. Oh, I do all of these. I thought this would come in with a different packet, but that's okay. Uh, this is still good information to have. Um, I don't think I have these variables either. unsigned or unused uh, stat points, unused uh, element points. Yeah, all of that good stuff. Okay, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, moving along here. Um, what do we need there? We need a type and title. Was type or title in these? Title, yes, but where's, where's pet type? Where's the type come from? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, that's fine. So we need to create all of these variables. Um, so the way we can do it is let's um let's jump there oops wrong shortcut button so uh control shift arrow right allows you to jump a whole word and then down we can select all of these hit underscore okay so that'll do that and then same idea we can indent Whoops. These are all integers. So we should be able to um, grab this and just go down the line there and paste it on all of them. And then go down the line and close that. Okay, so these variables, they don't exist yet. We'll need to uh, make them. So what I'll do is I will grab all of them. So we'll copy that to clipboard and then we'll go up here 
I could have just jumped to my bookmark now that I think about it. Uh, stats, fire, element. Okay, maybe we need a new block of information. Okay, that's fine. So we'll call this one um, advanced. Paste that in there. Um, shift alt and we'll go down all of them private int jump to the end same idea and we'll say equals minus one right so now all of those variables exist jump to my bookmark jump to the other bookmark Okay, so now um, these exist, these values exist, we can access them. So then the next piece is going to be um, the new level. Why is it called new level stats? I don't get it. That's fine. Okay, so we'll just grab that wonder, can we do all of them at the same time? Let's see if we can do more at the same time. Just to see what happens. Okay, so we have that. Let's, um, let's see if we can do all these in one go. Um, okay, so I don't want to mess up that text. So those, those separation lines, how can I do that? Okay, we can go like so, that, and like that. So then I can, oh, I didn't need to do this one. Because I want to go like this. kind of works, but not really. Not really. It was worth a try. Um, it was worth a try. Wait. Oh, wrong button. Whoops. I keep hitting the wrong button. There's too many buttons. Okay, so now I should be able to go um, and do all of these at once. It'll get a little messed up, but that's okay. Okay, I mean, that kind of works. I don't know how much more efficient that was, but um, it was worth a try. It was worth a try. Okay, so we'll grab that, jump to our bookmark up here, and then this, oh, I should have grabbed, um, I wanted to grab this as well. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing, of course, um, as we did with the, um, the other stuff. 
I like to use minus one as the default just because I know it's an invalid number and it's not something I'm really going to be using. Okay, so we have um, that and then we can do this one as well. Wait, did we skip one? No, I don't think so. I don't think we skipped one. Okay. I thought I skipped these. Oh, they existed before. That's why. Okay, that makes sense. Because I did feel like I skipped over that block. Okay, so we do set those there as well. Okay, that's fine, uh, not a big deal. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to the uh, end of this. There's still, like, there's a lot of information, right? It takes time to to even structure something like this. It takes uh, quite a bit of time. Okay, so we'll just grab all of that. I won't try to be super optimum. That, that didn't work uh, as well as I would have liked. So we'll just go with being semi-optimum. But I think we did good today, though, um, in terms of displaying that uh, information about the uh, the pet. I think it's good information in that um, it also uh, builds the core functionality needed to display more of those panels. So later, uh, when we go to keep adding more of these types of uh, panels of information whether it's equipment or whatever the case may be the functionality exists to a certain degree so that we can um, do it um, rather uh, a bit more quickly because it already exists now so that's uh, that's pretty important because um, it's something that definitely needed to be made and it's something that um, takes a bit of time to make, yes, but it's well worth it once it's been figured out because then you can just make the rest of the functionality follow suit uh, with the, um, the precedent that's already been set there with the manager, the event system, and how the information gets pulled and pushed and whatnot. Okay, so we still need to make these uh, as well. So I'll copy that, jump to my bookmark. I should probably bookmark farther down now. Let's go over here and we will, wait, wrong location. Let's leave the bookmark here and then this one up here, we'll move this one down here a bit more. I forgot to take that. It's okay. I like to kind of organize and structure stuff. So if you've seen me do what it is that I do, you understand that I 
kind of sometimes obsessively organized in structure, uh, it's because it's really necessary. If you want to do something on a larger scale, there has to be a logical structure in terms of uh, organization. Otherwise, things get out of hand very quickly and it's easy to... Um, it's easy to lose control at that point. But if you have an organization structure that you're following, it sets a precedent and it encourages you to continue to think in that manner as well so that um, you can um, keep following that kind of pattern. And when, when you establish a pattern, it's easier to continue to work within a pattern that you've set. And I find that really um, helps me specifically a lot um, with that kind of stuff because it's just, I keep forgetting to grab that. Keep forgetting to grab that little uh, title thing. Um, but yeah, it's, patterns are, are the key. Uh, patterns are... Um, really important, especially uh, when working with a larger project, because uh, even a framework, right? Uh, like the uh, model view control uh, design pattern, or if you use uh, one of the other uh, frameworks or whatever it may be. Um, wait, why is this one... Is that a duplicate? Yes, it is. That's why. That's why, because it already existed. So it was giving me a, uh, a warning message. Okay, that's fine. So then that brings us to Yeah, I think that's it. But I'm still seeing errors here. I'm not sure what those errors are, though. What does Unity tell me? Oh, I didn't close the line properly. Whoops. What did I mess up? Oh, I put too many closing. That's what I did. It's not that I didn't close it properly. I put too many. That's what I should have done. Okay, no errors. Looks good. Let's give it a quick test run just to see it working. Yeah, this stuff, it takes a long time to figure out all these little uh, details and whatnot. And uh, it's, sometimes it's really um, easy. Other times it's quite a bit more involved in terms of figuring this stuff out and seeing what's even needed. Because you don't know what is a prerequisite for another piece of thing until you try to fix that or implement something else, then you realize, oh, it's a prerequisite. Oh, you max everything. Okay. No, I think that works pretty well. So that just means that he's full, right? Am I on the right screen? Yeah, okay. So that works pretty well. But what we can do is we can still do type, but title, I don't know where that comes from. I think it might come from a different location or something. But this this gives us uh, a lot of information now. So let's have a look at title and expose um, title. Where is title? Yeah, it takes quite a while to, to figure this stuff out. But once you kind of... Um, figure it out um, it, it makes sense uh, even though it may not always be the best design because honestly uh, who cares about the best design it doesn't have to be the best anything really it just needs to be functioning 
Um, okay. Oops, I didn't mean to go to there. I meant to go to here. So now that we have that, so title is not going to be accessible here. Title is going to be accessible um, when we get the other information back from the server. So we should be able to set title from here. Pet title, okay. That should work. Now that we have access to so much more information. Yeah, I think that should, um, that should work. Now we have a lot more information for all the other panels as well that we're going to be making because there's a lot more stuff that, uh, that needs to be displayed that we're going to be getting to, um, uh, over time. So let's summon, uh, let's go cheesecake. Okay. So cheesecake, uh, yeah, like every single one of these will will benefit from that one monster packet that we just uh, processed. So now when we go here, title comes in as zero. Not what I was expecting. I think it's title might be a lookup ID. Or, a week ago I started using Google Firebase, a real-time uh, database for my game, fun stuff. Yeah, um, there's a lot of interesting things. Uh, I've also been considering looking at more metrics kind of information, because when you're making something, you need access to uh, metrics information. Like I want to know, um, for example, what do the users access the most, right? Um, which areas do they use? Which buttons do they press the most? What is the most engaging? right and which one is the least engaging and why is it the least engaging right and you don't know that stuff until you look at the metrics uh, unity comes built in and it provides you some metrics analytics but it's it's very limited they only take only x amount of um, um what do you call it x amount of uh, entries or, or whatever it may be. And it's not a big number. It's really easy to cap it out from, from the reading that I've done. So I may need to um, look into other solutions or maybe even make my own. I'm not sure. It always shown as zero. Really? Really? Okay. Uh, let's let's have a look at that and see. So I'll log in with the old client. So we'll summon a um, pet, any pet uh, that's above level one. So we'll go with Cookie Monster, of course. Okay, so we select it. Oh yeah, you're right. It is shown at zero. Maybe I just never implemented it. I don't recall exactly. I think it could be a case of I partially implemented it or maybe there was even a bug. I don't remember. It was too long ago. But okay, if that shows up as zero, then I'm okay with the new client showing it up as zero because it's consistent. It matches for now. I'm not too worried about it. What I do like is that the information is being displayed. That's important to me, right? But the next step though is how do we then close this panel? Because right now I'm stuck, right? There is no, there's no exit. There's no close button. There's no nothing, right? Um, 
So what I'm thinking is for these panels, I'll use that that background, that transitional background that uh, scales, and we'll add it to the um, yeah, I, I have an idea. Okay. So what we'll do then is we will we'll add the no click through background because we also want to prevent click through. Um, from that, we don't want the user to be able to select anything behind this panel once it comes up. It's the only thing we want the user to be able to interact with because otherwise they may select another NPC or something and bring up another menu, which looks kind of messed up. So we want to we want to simplify it and we want to uh, control that user experience to have it be you just get one panel open. Right. That way it's it's consistent across all devices, whether it's desktop, uh, uh, laptop um, uh, or uh, a mobile device such as iOS or Android. Um, let's uh, let's do that. Oh, wow. That time just flew by. OK, I, I don't think I'll have time to implement this. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to just drop this in there. Uh, so we'll go into pet panels. So uh, what I want to draw put in there is the no click through we have two of them why is there two I thought there would be only one maybe I made a mistake or something okay so the idea is that this panel um, comes up, but behind that panel uh, comes uh, this uh, no click through uh, at the at a lower level, right? And and this thing auto scales, right? So um, we'll need to sort this. So this will need to be at the correct level. Uh, meaning uh, the UI uh, sorting layer, should I say. And then this will auto scale and it'll stretch to the screen size and go in behind that. So for right now, let's see, what's the lowest layer? Just so we can put it behind it. GUI layer four, three, two, one. Oh, come on. Okay, I, I will need to adjust the sorting. So this one, we would have to put it on GUI layer zero to put it behind. But if we go and we run this, what it will do is it should auto stretch, but it's gonna be behind everything. Not what I was thinking. Oh, right. We told it to collapse. We told it to collapse on, um, not that. Nope. There we go. That. So I want to disable that. Yeah, so that's the idea, okay? So when it comes up, it'll look something like this. Of course, because the sorting is kind of, um, is not correct right now, this shows up on top, this shows up um, on top. Uh, we need to correct the sorting. So the idea will be that you can click on this and this will collapse this, uh, or you can use the joystick and press the back button and it'll also um, clear this, but that's gonna be the next step. Um, that's, the, that's the idea. And then once that's done, then we can um, maybe do a quick little bit of cleanup to this, this panel, because it even says the wrong label. It says inventory. It's actually supposed to be pet information or my pet or something like that. Um, 
and then we can move on to the next panel. Um, of course, every panel will have potentially different information, so it'll, it'll need to be built. But the good thing is that some of the functionality between the panels is shared with all of that stuff that we did with the manager UI coordinator, the event system, the way the, uh, the event gets requested to be dispatched and then it gets listened to uh, by the uh, GUI pet panels. But that's kind of the idea though. So, uh, but that'll be for the, um, for the continuation when we continue to uh, work on the uh, project. Um, however, I think uh, this is where I'm gonna be calling it for today. So of course, as usual, if you do enjoy this content and you wanna see when I go live, hit that follow button, follow me on Twitter, on Instagram. You're welcome to join the Discord um, as well. Uh, I do broadcast on Tuesdays and on Fridays. I don't broadcast for that long because I just don't have the time to uh, put aside to broadcasting. Uh, but I do work outside of the project when I get the opportunity to do so, um, either during the uh, weekdays, which usually isn't the case, but uh, more often during the, uh, the weekends is when I get to really uh, work on the development side because to develop, you can't just sit down for 15 minutes and make progress, right? You can't sit down even for half an hour or an hour. You need to sit down for much, much longer than that. Wrap your head around and get into the thought frame of what it is that you want to modify. Do your research and see how it ties into everything else first. Then you can start programming and modifying logic. So really the best way to develop something in terms of programming is when you have at least a good couple of hours minimum to put aside towards it, preferably much longer. Uh, so development is, or the programming part of it is usually something that I can only do when I put a lot of time uh, aside for it. But the other stuff, like the coordination of the artwork or the other things that I'm working on behind the scenes, those I can do with bits and pieces or if someone reaches out to me for through email and whatnot, I can do those um, outside of that. But um, yeah, so most of the development uh, I do um, during the weekends, but the coordination stuff is usually during the weekdays. But I also do these broadcasts to show you guys kind of what goes on behind the scenes in terms of the project, where's it at, and what are we currently working on. And this happens to be the current focus right now is the pets and the information panels and will eventually be uh, working uh, towards the pet combat system. And there's some big, big changes gonna be happening uh, and coming down the line, which are things that I'm working on behind the scenes, which I'm not ready yet to discuss and unveil because those are gonna be game changers. They're gonna be pretty big. Uh, and it's gonna change the project for the better. Um, and it's gonna change uh, it and make it uh, a lot more interesting in my opinion. However, uh, that's going to be it for me today. Uh, of course, uh, the next broadcast will be on Tuesday, but uh, I'm usually active on Discord periodically. Um, if there's anything of importance, of course, reach out to me uh, through social media or through the official website uh, email, which is also available. But that's going to be it for me today. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the, uh, the content and got some entertainment as well as some educational value out of it. And I'll see you in the next broadcast. Have a great weekend. Bye.